Oh, we're fucking live, boys. We're not alive. We are alive. That is true. You I'm just gonna, add a letter and it's all okay, I'm huh, Leo? Just sip this Evian. That I, we're got, we have a guest today, guys, and I'm pumped about it. I'm really excited about it. Danny, of course, he's got a bit, you know. What's Danny without a bit? It's, it's, a, bi- it's a big guest. It's a big guest. It's our biggest guest. Well... Bigger than Nerdball or TV? I don't know, dude. Bigger I, than no, Moby? I, I don't want to say that. By number, by social media, no. I'm gonna, but I'm going to say maybe by talent. Can we? Can I say that? The guy we got coming in today, he's Chris D'Elia. There's no sense hiding it from the audience yeah. any longer. Chris D'Elia's opener. His opener. He's a very hot, up-and-coming comedian in Los Angeles. He's a very good comedian. He's performed all over the United States. And he is a fan, I think, of just... I don't think he's a fan of the of our... He doesn't follow me on Instagram, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it certainly doesn't seem like he's a fan. You know, yeah, but he's a good guy and probably will after this. And, uh, you know, I've talked to him before a couple times and asked him to be on this, and he said he'd ha- be happy to be on there, be happy to be on the uh, the Leo and Danny show. I'm psyched. We're going to dig out a lot of dirt mm-hmm. from the Crystal Leah tour stories. Uh, yeah, please, uh, please don't tell him about the, the, the penis thing and me, us hooking up with the same girl. Can you please... Not gonna, you're, you're after, telling it to the audience right now. I can't uh, ask him. Uh, I knew I knew it. I knew you were gonna fucking spring this up, dude. You're gonna ask. He's about, a cool guy. You're gonna ask. About, He's a bro. You're gonna ask Michael and you're gonna ask the fucking guy's opener about his his fucking cock. Dude. Yes, Chris Lee's cock, dude. dude. Would anybody? What is wrong with you? Expect anything less of me? No, dude. But I just was hoping one time, dude, that we could be cool to a guest. But no. We gotta ask about dick size, huh? Leo. I'm gonna make a really half-hearted attempt to keep that question in my back holster, but it's probably gonna come out. It's probably gonna come out. What we're gonna open with, though, we're gonna get to all that shit: the Crystalia road stories, the Crystalia penis size. First, Jesus. I know Michael Lenoche, Delia's opener, yeah. is a big Miami Dolphins fan. He is. A, he's from Florida. He's a big Miami Dolphins fan. He's a big baseball fan too, so we could probably get into that. But yeah, I get it. What are you gonna do? He doesn't know me. He doesn't really know our brand of humor. No. So I'm going to throw on my Bengals jersey, and I'm going to be giving him the stink eye the second he walks in the door, which is going to be about 15 minutes from now. Yeah, I'm going to be giving him the stink eye the second he gets his butt planted in that sofa and Austin sets his camera live. I'm going to lay into him about how shitty the Dolphins are, oh, about God. how horrible their draft picks were. And I'm just going to make up most of my stats, but it should That's be fine. It should be funny. Um, listen, uh, he, this guy's a pro, dude. I'm going to warn you. He, I was asking him what kind of drinks he wants. I was like, listen, if you want an adult beverage, it's not the first time that somebody's gotten sauced up on the Leon Danny show. And he goes, mm-hmm. no. Well, you he never goes, got sauced up on the Leon Danny show. You got sauced up, drove your car, wall <sighs> sauced up, and arrived sauced up. Thanks for letting everybody know about my drive, oh, my, my my drunk driving history, Danny. All right, I wasn't caught, so it doesn't count. It's kind of like, I guess I don't know. What would you say that it's like? I wanted to say it's like cheating, but that's mean. I'm I'm not a cheater, but I will say that it's like masturbating in public. It's a problem if you get caught, but if you don't, it's like it never happened. It's like the consequences of. Pulling your meat and an 80-year-old man walking by and seeing it. Right. Lower stakes, I think, than uh, going 100 down the freeway in a blackout. Well, there More could still, potentially go wrong. There was still traffic. I took the Pacific Coast Highway all the way up. I was being... I was locked the fuck in. I wasn't making calls. I wasn't texting. Nothing like that. I you, was locked. You in. were simply scrolling your Instagram for any girls who might have liked your newest pic. Just to at a hundred, Leo. How could you? At a hundred, you're right, dude. I don't know, man. I'm living on the edge, man. I have a fuck. I'm a daredevil. I'm a stunt man, dude. At the end of the day, I'm a fucking stunt man, dude. Mm. It would, uh, how much of your job at Universal Studios did you do drunk? I did the show drunk a few times. We would go to fucking the, the, the there was a bar about thirty feet from Waterworld. So every now and then we'd at lunchtime we'd you know have a few beers. I wouldn't say completely drunk because you'd throw up. I, it was literally like a sprint the entire time. It was like fifteen minutes of the show time, and it was a sprint. So it was a little gnarly, you know. We were talking ex- extensively about Leo's job at Waterworld while we were filming the Wizard of Oz video. Mm. We'll talk about all that the strike situation too. What I fished out of Leo, though, finally got him to admit it after all this time was that his job in this supposed stunt show consisted of coming out on a boat shirtless, flexing his bicep and firing off a fake shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a real shotgun, but blanks, blanks. Yeah, that's not what I think of when I think of somebody doing stunts. You're right. I had a fight. I had a hammer fight with a guy with like a big hammer type axe thing. You had a hammer fight with me during the janitor shoot. Remember that? (sighs) Yeah, dude. Big Bear Mountain. That's a classic. 
fantastic, man. That's some moment. of my best acting when I when I when I'm like dismissive of you and I say that one. I forgot what I say, but. I remember thinking, wow, that's some of the best acting I've ever done yeah. on camera, at least. You don't remember anything you said, but still left a big it impression was, on you. Yeah. I mean, what what did I... It was something like, uh, like, get out of here, you fucking... I don't know what it was. Uh, wow. You're right. I'm sorry. Whoever the screenwriter was must have been a genius. You, you were a genius. You wrote that really Continue well. telling us about your responsibilities and your so-called stunt so show. I, well, first of all, I, I stunt drove a boat, and it was the guy compared it to driving a semi full you know driving a semi really fast in like a parking lot that's kind of what it was it was a little pool and i drove this big boat yeah. and i had to like drift it into the thing and then yeah, yeah. and then it was so know, tough you could it. do it shit-faced while blowing kisses at the girls in the stands well i got really good at it and then yes i would keep an eye i, I would keep an eye on this i would put the sage was the guy that kind of opened the show probably the rule that you would play he kind of pump up the crowd you know say a few jokes you know and then get killed within the first five minutes That'd totally be your job. Um, usually the old guys did it. And uh, so he would pump, He would do, while he was pumping up the crowd, he would tell me section one, two, or three where the hottest girls were. So he'd come backstage with a guy, yeah, section two, got a couple blondes, look like a oh. Australian dance team or something like that. That wasn't would, just part of his pump up speech? No, he would Hey, yeah. welcome to the Waterworld stunt show. I can see the hottest girls are over in section two. Yeah. Dude, no. After you a couple drinks, that. he never let that slip? Honestly, I think they only, what, what, the, they've said like the F word a few times when somebody like slipped on some water or something like oh fuck uh, here's and, nothing crazy like that, here's no. why i'm skeptical that leo here's why i think that guy could have done exactly what i just did you once admitted that during the middle of the stunt show i think it was somewhere between flexing your right bicep and firing off the blank yeah. you walked up into the crowd took a girl by her hand and got her snapchat yeah while yeah, the show would, was going live look, i'm not gonna lie i would do yes sometimes there was a little bit of downtime when we would take over the atoll see i was part of the, the mean guys I was, I was, we would come in, we would take over the atoll and then a toll, an atoll is like, it's, it's a word for, it's from Waterworld. It's, it's a floating fortress. Mm. So I would come over, I would come in, I would take, I was a, uh, you know, what was it? Uh, I forgot the name. I fucking, for, I'm forgetting everything, dude. And so anyway, I'd come in, I was one of the bad well, you're guys. you drunk most of the time. Yeah, that's what it is. I was drunk last night. I think that's what it is. Um, came over, I would come and we would take over the atoll, right? And then I would, when we were like taken over I, my job was to go and like intimidate some of the people so instead of doing who, who that the people the the, the, the crowd the, it was, the high school girls in the crowd <laughs> there were not that many high school girls it was a lot of college girls too danny yeah. and what i would do yeah i would go into the crowd sometimes because i would you know we had this you know i was supposed to intimidate people and sometimes there'd be a cute girl so yeah i would sit down next to her or like uh you know the, the crowd would kind of be laughing about this and i'd kind of like get her information i'd say something like Along the lines of the, the storyline, I'd be like, I haven't seen women in months. What's up? Can I get, can I get your Snapchat? You know, some stuff like that. Yeah, it sounds effectively intimidating. It was a very fun job. And I, you know, pulled my penis out way too many times. And that's why I'm not working there anymore. While you were I was there forced, in the stands intimidating people? Forced to resign. All right. Fine. Yes. Sometimes I do it during the show. Leo, Leo had a habit of getting park employees, females, mm -hmm. back to his Ultima for blowjobs. Mm -hmm. In the parking lot. Yeah. Look, and look, I'm not proud of it or anything. Some of them weren't, weren't that cute. There was definitely a mix of security guards and ugly fucking dressers that would do this for me. But you know what? I am a horny guy and it would happen. But anyway. When I've never seen a cute female security guard. And I've worked so many she jobs. She was, yeah, she was like uh, Latina and, and black. She was, you know, for a blowjob. You know, I mean, she was a little chubby. Questionable yeah. tattoos. Shh. She kid at home did have she did have a questionable tattoo no kid don't no believe kid. it she no did kid. she probably got pregnant and delivered the child in her sleep but she was so fat and so oh, drunk oh all my the time God. but she yeah didn't even know. yeah dude so yeah i would i was i was you know and an, i was basically using the park as it was like a junior college that's how i treated it i would go around i was big man on campus i would literally be shirtless 98 percent of the times backstage during the show whatever and then I would, yeah, I would, I would get these girls, and then one of them, you know, they got kind of mad one day. Don't shit when you, where you eat, all right. And then one day they just said, hey, he, you know, uh, I blew Leo, but he is, you know, he made me, he makes me uncomfortable at work now. And that's uh, what Austin's been saying since we hired him. Well, god damn it, I'm old habits die hard, buddy. I did get blown by Austin in in my Ultima right outside of your house. Your neighbor might have seen. I'm your aware. Neighbor, your neighbor might have seen. I'm the HR department here, but I choose to cast a blind eye. Yeah, it's perfect. So, yeah, your neighbor might have seen, dude. And Talent over producers. 
Austin, okay? Yeah, but if you worked there, yeah, you would have been the sage. You would have, you would have gotten quite a amount of... Dude, I, there was hot girls at the park, too. I kind of... I went out you know, with the dance team, dude. I, I banged a couple of girls on the dance team. The dance team that was Universal Studios' dance team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. I imagine they're pretty fun. hot. They were hot, dude. And I imagine yeah. they get paid very little. They're ex-college cheerleaders yeah. who their whole lifestyle used to be drinking, yeah. fucking, mm-hmm. staying in shape. And now, now it's just continuing for an extra three or four years. Actually, they got paid not bad. It was uh, $40 an hour. Okay, just yeah, enough yeah. to uh, make them feel like they're riding high and they That's could true. Yeah, afford was, to make bad decisions. Exactly. It was a better, it was not a bad gig. Oh, we got Lenochi texted. Oh, shit. He goes, just looking for parking. Oh, shit. So should I go out there and, and uh, look for them? And then, yeah, are you, are you good? You got your stats? I, not really. I'm going to make them the, up on the spot. You got the stats? We got that camera fired up? We're, we're ready to go? You want to fire it up, Austin? Austin, did yeah, you not sleep right again last yeah, night? Yeah, did you not fucking sleep, dude? No, I was drunk last night. Do you need a coffee? The truth. Both of you guys, give Austin I got a coffee. Drunk, dude, I, dude what, you want a coffee, Austin? I don't like Austin oh, in I zombie don't. mode. You, want, you take the cream one, then. It's discouraging when I make a funny, and it's Austin's good. just staring with a thousand-yard stare I into know. his computer I screen. Know. Should I go outside and find him? If you want, yeah. Go well, for no, it. Otherwise, what? He's going to... Yeah, go know. for it. Go for it. Go find him. I got uh, this, go dude. You got this? Yeah, I'll, I'll hold it down. Solo mic. Dude, what if you... I'll entertain the you, crowd. What? <laughs> yeah, get him fired up. I'll do this. What if you What if you decide now you, you're going to do a solo podcast because of the, the two minutes that I go, you fucking just arrive at some some magical place where you're like, you know what, man? I, I think I have to do this alone. I already decided I was going to do this after my last YouTube live stream. You got a month left on your contract. Make the best of it. I <laughs> Go get Lenochi. <laughs> Austin, Un- here's yeah. unbelievable. This it, is unfucking believable. Here's something you and I could talk about. Austin fucking has an appointment arranged through his sister to come cut my hair. Oh, nice. The deal: a hundred dollars and an Instagram shout out. She texts me three hours before the scheduled appointment, one p.m. last Friday, confirming, telling me to shampoo my hair. I'm ready to go. Can't wait to have a fresh cut. It's been a while. I'm getting shaggy. I was actually a little disgusted with my do when I was rewatching the Imperial footage. You text me like an hour before the appointment's supposed to happen saying you had a family emergency and you couldn't come? Yeah, pretty much. It wasn't true. No, it was true. I just don't really want to like talk about it on the air. But then you could come today and you said she actually just felt uncomfortable doing a haircut for a shout out, which makes me think you just wanted to make something up so she didn't have to actually tell you the reason or no, me the we reason were, for not coming. No, we were going to go. And then, like, the thing with, like, there was, like, a deal with my family, basically, like, a big argument sort of deal. And then uh, just after that was all over, like, the next day, she was like, yo, sorry about your friend Austin or whatever. I wanted to do that to help you out. But, like, honestly, it's not enough. Like, I don't really do things for $100, and I don't even know why I agree oh, She does things for $100. Not hair not related, but I don't know if she would leave the house. Like, is my mic or, volume up? Am, am I sounding good here? Are you looking at the faders or the yeah, the control? You're solid. Board? Okay, that's fine. It's okay, man. It's okay. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do to get my haircut, but it's okay. You could pay a little more money, and she'd probably do it. Oh. I'm used to paying sixty. There he is. Uh, what's up, my friend? What's up? Yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up, bro? Yeah, we got your your spot over there. Dude. You right there. We, we taped up the mic. Michael, so Michael Lenochi. What's up? Are you guys already started and I'm just jumping in? Hell yeah. Austin, like do you mind closing the door? A cold brew and an Evian, just in case, right? thank, thank you, man. You guys are so sweet, dude. Relax. Fuck, um, it feels good to get out and do something, I'll tell you that. Doesn't it, man? Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Throw on those headphones. Join almost, the conversation I here. almost said masks for pussies uh, in front of your your kid neighbor there, dude. It was, it was close. Yeah, I, I felt like the kid I first met when I walked in. I mean, what is he, like, 18? Yeah, yeah. Across the yeah. street over here? No, no he was talking oh. about your Asian roommate, dude. Yeah, he <laughs> looks very young for his age. He works for uh, we a could, big tech company. We could turn the headphones down a little bit. Headphones down for him? He is on two hours of sleep, Sorry. and he drank a lot last night. He's in, sort of incompetent. Sorry, thank you. Okay, cool. Can we just move yeah. that tri- uh, the mic stand just over towards that side of the couch? Is it yeah, blocking his shot? Perfect. Yeah, just a little bit. He's good now. Cool. He's good now. Good. Okay, cool. Uh, it's also pulling me. Is it pulling you a little bit? I'm just being a- Austin, 
He's yeah, we, big time, dude. Lenochi's big good. time, dude. We got to make good. him comfortable. Is he still good in the shot? Austin, yeah. blow Lenochi. Austin, no, like, not right that's now. what this whole busy. thing was about. Oh. You, you're telling me you will later? <laughs> <laughs> Anything for you, bud. Austin is new to the podcast. He's young. You can see he colors his hair and he's got an expensive cut. Yeah. He's ripe for sexual harassment. Nice. So. You're 20 years late with the blonde, but that's fine. Looks <laughs> Thanks. Good. You're a little late with the blonde, kid. But uh, we, yeah. we did that when I was in middle school. Nice. Yeah, I remember the exactly. lead singer of The Offspring had that haircut in 1994. Yeah, yeah. dude. I remember... Uh, yeah, that was cool. Wait, how, old, how old are you? We're, we're the same. I'm 33. Close. Oh, You're okay. about to be 36. Oh, nice. Yeah. But yeah, same generation. Yeah, dude. The, the blonde, that was like the cool cut when we were like in middle school and or... Yeah, cause boy, boy bands and then Eminem. Exactly. Boy bands and Eminem. Exactly. And now Austin Schlosser. Yeah. The real celebrity. Good old yeah, Austin. Austin. Mm-hmm. The real talent. His sister cuts hair. But you just cut your hair. I saw that. I made a mistake. It's not a mistake. I think it looks good. You got a nice round head. It's a mistake. Let's see it, dude. Can we see it? So, Michael, I saw this too. I was keeping track. You cut your own hair. Wait, take it off one more time. Let me see this. The widow's peak is a little crooked, which I know. It's a mistake. That's. But other than that, it looks passable. It looks passable. It's passable. But listen, I went from a seven to a five. I, I would give you I would say you went from an eight. To six. Let's ask. Let's I'd ask, say uh, eight to six. Let's uh, ask Austin about this. Our man, bitch boy. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Would you sit on my lap? Scale of one through ten. <laughs> you, look, you look like you would sit on my lap, and you're not gay, but you just go with it because I don't tell you what to do. That's how you look. You're like I, I didn't want to do it, but he's, it. he would. Ask, you look like you would be manipulated by R. Kelly. One hundred percent. Like one hundred percent. You would like, for oh. sure. He said, "Stay here," so I never left, but I was happy. <laughs> Like he's you like, would shit the bucket, man. I'll sit on a lap for the right price, maybe. All Dude, right, that's so it's a good. Yeah, your bad. sister won't cut hair for the right price, though. We were talking about this right before you walked in. That his sister was this close to coming over and giving me a haircut, got cold feet, and doesn't want to do it now because I guess I insulted her with the hundred dollar offer. Oh, she usually God. cuts for like three, four hundred. What? So now, I don't know what the fuck to do now. Is that real? She yeah, cuts yeah. his hair. She, I mean, look at that masterpiece. She was really She's, upset, or she was scared because of the COVID thing. She was scared because of my advances in the texts. I was, uh, I was being a little forward sexual. Well. It was That's a number. You, a have, number. you have that energy. He does, man. <laughs> a little bit creepy, dude. He went up, dude. He he. When I first met him, he wasn't as creepy. But then now that with his followers going up, dude, he went from. I met him at fifteen hundred. Nice guy. Eight eighty thousand now. He is a sick fuck. Mm. Let me tell you. Well, he, 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 when you when you get the when you get up there, people get a little bit more forward with you. So then you get used to thinking exactly. it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But then then you go around. You, you're around a couple of normal people, and they go right. like this, and you're like, oh, mm. I forgot. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, you know, dude. It's just like a mistake. Exactly. We're gonna get into this. We're gonna get into the pussy getting, right. the fame, all that. First, Michael, what I want to say, you addressed me as Burrow when you walked through the door, yeah. oh, and shit. I want to tell you that if there's one thing I hate more than anything on this planet it's the miami fucking oh, dolphins god here we go again man that's weird because we're, we're we're not even the same division i don't care okay? <laughs> okay when it comes to the dolphins i cheer for the bills the patriots and the giants that's disgusting or the jets how could anyone cheer for the patriots <sighs> the dolphins no. i think they made the poorest decisions in this draft out of any team in the league well i think if they had a, a fucking two molecules in their brain they would have stuck with fitz magic and they would have let Tua be drafted by somebody else. I think he's a terrible quarterback. Well, that's fine. You just obviously don't know a lot about football. That's okay. You're allowed oh, to be like that. Oh, my God. Well, somebody finally fucking brings the truth to the fucking <laughs> Leo, equation. what does everybody call me in this office? They call me Danny, the football stat machine mullen. <laughs> well, okay? you're, well, you're competing with these two. I mean, That's true. I'm a baseball fan in Austin's so homosexual. So. Michael, <laughs> Michael, answer me this. Which team in the league has the lowest amount of yards after the catch? The Dolphins? Yes. <laughs> Which team has the most botched interceptions by cornerbacks? Probably sounds like the Dolphins. Which team? Are we talking about la- we're talking about last year, though? I'm talking about last year. Absolutely. Yeah. Which team has the most incompetent, ineffective offensive line and has no chance in hell of protecting the new draft pick to the, the first 15 weeks, the Miami Dolphins. They're fucking terrible, dude. Yeah, but they were in Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Yeah. And that... How many movies were the Bengals in? Yeah, dude. <laughs> hey, the Bengals are America's team. <laughs> I don't care what everybody says. Fuck the Cowboys. Hey, Tua sucks, dude. 
<laughs> Where would you rather live, Miami or Cincinnati? There we Cincinnati. go, dude. No way. I've, I've been to Cincinnati, and the and and the only thing that it's better than is Dayton, Ohio, and that's like the the worst place I've ever. Been I'd rather Ohio's. be in Cincinnati, Dayton. You know why? Because I'm not Cuban. That's why I want nothing to do with Miami. All right. Well, we got racist. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. We get yeah. Racism happens on this podcast on occasion, but well, it's all if you're for from, if you're from Cincinnati, of course. Exactly. Hey. The best thing that ever happened to you was Ken Griffey Jr. and that yeah. wasn't that great. Hey. Hey, Tua. You got hurt later on in his career, yeah. Two of my friends face fucked him in college. <laughs> the guy's gay. Hey, Give come a on. gay quarterback. No, don't tell me that, dude. I don't know. Like, well, then guess what? He's going to be the face of the gay people, and, and he's yes. going to be the first open gay athlete. Fuck yeah. You know what? what? Gay people are efficient. You know Hell that happened? Yeah, they are. It happened with Michael Sam. Michael Sam gets drafted into the NFL. He becomes this big, famous yeah. gay athlete. He disappears. Like seventh-round pick. He was just as good as Tua, and you know it. He disappears onto a bunch of gay cruises into the bathhouses of San Francisco. Pretty soon, this is replaced by this. And I'm Dude. doing a jerking off motion for those of you just listening. Is it, <laughs> well, they, they heard it. Uh, they heard it, for sure. Burrow's going to have a rough time his first year. You're changing the subject. Let's talk about how shitty the Dolphins... I'm kidding. I know. Hey, Mike, yeah. I'm, he's, Mike yeah. we set this up ahead of time. I was yeah. like, I, I know he's a Dolphins fan. I'm just going to throw out a bunch of bullshit and trash the Dolphins. <laughs> I, I, I knew you were doing that. I knew it wasn't sincere because I was like, nobody like <laughs> hates the Dolphins. <laughs> like to be like to yeah, hate dude. a team, you have to be like winning so much to right, hate a team. Right, right, right. No, who hates the Dolphins? It's man. a good point. If you're not in the nobody playoffs, nobody hates the Bengals. They just feel bad for them. I mean, you feel bad for the Browns too. I feel the Bengals did fine for a few years. They were good for a little With bit. Carson the Bra- Palmer. The Browns have had it the worst. Like, if they, if this doesn't work out this year for the Browns, it's going to reset another four or five years. Yeah, because yeah. they're going to cut what's well, his they name, gotta move Mayfield. On. He's got to, like, he's got to, like, progress this year. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I the Dolphins actually, from all I heard, had a really good draft this year, and they're going to be at least even or better. Yeah. So well, I, I apologize for all the, the Dolphins have the I only said. perfect record Hold though. On, they have he, the... Is he really gay? What's that? <laughs> is he really gay? Is he really gay? <laughs> I just made that up. Oh, okay. It'd be great if I did. Hey, you went to college in Florida, right? I went to FSU. Yeah. Okay, nice, that's sweet. Dude. I don't know where Tua even went, but it would be funny if I had a couple Alabama. buddies. Alabama. It'd be great You're if I had, Alabama, yeah. dude, beta, theta, pi, Alabama. I know two brothers who did actually face fuck to a, he's a bottom dude. <laughs> he's a bottom. Yeah. Bro, you God. can't throw a spiral like that and be a bottom. <laughs> exactly. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. So, uh, I'm about to get Michael Sam on here and have an interview. So dude, I don't even, have we even said this is Michael Lenoci. Yeah. Uh, it's Usually not, people, it's in the title of the description of podcast, yeah, so, so it's fine. So it should be fine. Yeah, I yeah. like what people always describe. They're like, well, do you want to say something? I'm like, if they care, they'll read the description. As far as the spelling That's of your true. name? That's yeah, true. yeah, or like who it is or what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. We already introduced you, and let me know if we left anything out. You're a stand-up comedian first and foremost. It used to be, yeah. What's happening? Uh, <laughs> not- COVID. COVID. Are you not doing any confused. Zoom shows? No. Why not, man? I don't want to do Those that. Those are, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, they sound I'll, I'll like, go on a Zoom and riff. The problem with the Zoom show, yeah, right, is yeah. you burn your best material with no crowd and really no payoff other than a little bit of engagement. I don't even know. I've never even attempted to do it. I've heard people do it. I've, I've heard people say they like it. And then I've heard people say, nah, it's just like, for me, it's just, that's not what the art is. It's not at all. It's yeah. just like, oh, okay, sure. I mean, I've gone on like my, my buddies has like a Zoom party nice. where people pay, my buddy Mark, where people pay to come on and it will be like me and just like you, it goes on for like three hours and I'll drop in. And then when I come in, all the humans are like muted and then it's just like other comics that, and then I'll just go around riffing and like busting balls like that's that's, that's like getting your comedy chops in a way or podcasting it's like yeah. Instagram you know live I mean? like, yeah or podcasting is a great way like if I have ideas or, or bits I'll just riff on my podcast with it yeah. and that's fine guys night out is that no 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 no, no. I don't have not? that anymore I, I have one it's the takeover it's the just takeover, by myself yeah, yeah. Yeah. So your your channel is Michael Linochi that's your yeah, channel where your podcast YouTube. is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And then, cool. yeah, you, so are, no Zoom shows, though. Are you the kind of guy, or if you had to break it down into a percentage, how much of your material do you say you write and premeditate, and how much is just you riff it on stage, you like it, and then you say it again the next night? I'll have ideas and then and then riff it and then maybe write it, too, a little bit. But I, I, I never, like, 
actually write with a pen and piece of paper, a pen and paper, and then go, okay, perfect. And then I go on stage, and it goes exactly how I wrote it. And I'm like, there you go. See, like I'm yeah, not like that. Wouldn't that be nice? That's yeah. what I tried to do. Sure. The, the one of the only times I did stand up yeah. was I wrote it all down on a MacBook during a three hour writing session and tried to recite it verbatim. We uh, it yeah, I mean, you, in the beginning, everybody tries everybody it like that, tried, yeah. and it's just like, but more, I'm more like like uh, uh, like I have an idea. Like if I wrote something down. I wrote it down and I'll try to remember like what po- points I want to say and then like on stage I'll riff it and I, I've done stand up enough to where like if I feel like it has something I could stay in it but if it's not if I could feel like it's not going anywhere I could jump out of it and jump into a different bit and the crowd would never even know that I was like maybe even going to try another bit so and then maybe afterwards listen to the set and then go back and then rewrite it and then just go from there and try to replicate what I wrote, I guess, in a way. Can we backtrack a little bit? Because Leo yeah. sent me an interview with you earlier today, and I was listening to it on my drive back from Santa Barbara. You were in college yeah. in Florida. Was it during your junior year, your senior year? Was it right after you graduated? When did you decide you weren't going to go be some sort of professional? When did you decide you wanted to get into show business? Um, I mean, well, I obviously, I thought about it when I was younger. And then when I went to uh, college, I was just like, having a good time and then like senior year i mean i had thought about it in college but it wasn't realistic because like i lived in florida so yeah. it was like it was like you're not gonna go to la you know what i mean like you're just like i was like oh that would always be fun it was always like a dream but then like so many people around you your mom your dad your fr- your your friends are like no you gotta like get a job and mm-hmm, then right. get, get a career and then get married and have kids like that's the matrix of the world and uh and and then by the time I graduated college, I was just like I had no plan. I was just like like I because I wasn't in anything specific in college. Like okay, I'm gonna study this, graduate with this degree, get a job in this area. Like I didn't. I was just like oh, let me get a degree, and then when I have a degree, I'll go around and just interview places and be mm-hmm. like, you tell me what to do. Yeah. Right. What am I supposed to do for a career? Yeah. And everyone's like sales. If you could talk to people, yeah. sales. So mm-hmm. that's what you're gonna do. Yeah. And then I was I had some sales jobs after college. And well, I was like this is fucking miserable. What kind of sales jobs? I had I did the same thing. The, sales. The first the first one I got. Uh, I got one of those. Remember after college, you would have those headhunters for you. Yeah. Like I, 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 I went on interviews, didn't get any jobs. And then I, my first job was inside pharmaceutical sales with oh, this nice. place called med search, which was a scam, which was like a, mm. a really bad, a secondary, a secondary wholesaler company that would like, would stock up on like, um, drugs that would go short a lot. And then when hospitals would usually buy from their wholesalers, when the wholesalers would run out, we would like cold call them and mark up the price of these pharmaceutical sales. Holy shit. Yeah. So it was kind of like a a fucking gray area that was like legal, but also unethical. Mm. And we would just fucking cold call these fucking pharmacies in hospitals. And you would talk to the pharmacist and uh, pharmacists, if you don't know this, they go on, they get a lot of vacation days. Like I have a buddy who's a pharmacist too. So we would mark, and talk to them and find out when they went on vacation. And then this, the the far, the fillers, the pharmacy fillers would the come techs, in. The yeah, The people would, who make yeah. 30K versus 100K. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they would fill in. We're like, hey, what's up? So Susan, yeah. So, oh, she's out of town. Oh, yeah, she, uh, that's right. She went to the Bahamas for the week. That's crazy. Well, I just want to follow up because there's a shortage on this one. Mm-hmm. She she told me to let you guys know when, when you guys, uh, when, when there was a shortage. So we have enough. So do you want us to fucking, and we would sell it to wow. them. And then mark it up, and then fucking the other whole pharmacists would come back and be like, "What the fuck is this?" And but like, it's, it's on Walgreens dime though, so nobody really gives a fuck. In the sure, end. sure, and, but like, yeah, sometimes they would, and they wow. would fight and try to return it and shit like that. But that's such a. But it was no like return. it was such a fucking uh, a boiler room job, right? Looking back, like I feel like now, as an like more of an adult, I would have murdered it. Yeah, <laughs> like knowing yeah. how it worked. But before, I was just like, you didn't know anything. I was twenty three, but. I had that, and then I worked at like uh, um, another like telecommuni- telecommunication company or something. Nice. Got fired. I got fired from all these jobs after like three months, two weeks, and then another one. I did. Uh, I sold health insurance. Nice. Wow. I, that was did, unethical. All That's so the, unethical too. All all sales. It's so bad. Like bad. I would be right. in a family's house with their kids running around and just like not say things. That's Jesus. how you would sell insurance. You would just say the things that. 
yeah. sound good and then not say the things that don't, don't sound good. Yeah. My last sales job, or one of my last sales jobs before I did comedy full time, we were selling RV cameras. They go on the back of an RV and they help you back up because the thing's like 28 feet sure. long. You're Winnebago. You need that. And we're selling to primarily old people who just retired and have a bunch of money they have from their retirement or they want to invest in this so they can travel the country with their remaining years. The scam we pulled. Our cameras were all standard HD and waterproof, oh, but we charged an extra fifty dollars to get check the box HD, check the box waterproof. Oh my so God. essentially, with every single sale, we were charging these poor retirees who lived in places like Cincinnati, Ohio, a hundred extra dollars for one of our units. The company was so shisty; we hired homeless dudes to do our tech support. The company didn't care. Once we had your money on the Absolutely. sale, we're not fixing your fucking camera. If you want to send it back, be our guest. We figure you're going to get tired of the whole thing and just forget about it and buy a new camera from somebody competent. Yeah. But I had definitely had one of those but boiler rooms. I can imagine jumps. there's so many, like, there's the, a huge market for that either. Like RV cameras. I can't I imagine. Dude, yeah. if you have good SEO, there are enough motherfuckers retiring and buying RVs that you can support an operation that, That's crazy. that has homeless people working for it. Yeah. It was yeah. me, one other sales guy, one Jewish kid, and then like two homeless dudes. Yeah. And then the owners who just pocketed all the money. Yeah, I mean, dude, every sales job is fucking unbelievable. It's a little bit of a scam, man. I did. I sold copiers, and that was pretty shady. They would, they would sell a lot of copiers as new. They were used, and... They would kind of like they're like cars. They get like a certain amount of like copies on them, and then they stop fucking working. So I, we heard that the warehouse guys figured out a way to like revert the numbers back a lot, so they could sell the shitty copiers. They would buy used copiers all the time and then sell them. God, this new. Is such a premise to a movie. He's a fucking a copy machine salesman. Fuck yeah. And then also <laughs> he would hit on all the chicks at the front desk, oh, well, the that's, secretaries, that's, to that's, get that's, back and sell copiers. That's how you sell copiers. You just hit on the secretaries. Because, you know, once they, they'll give you the information that you need, usually like who the office manager is or their email, and then you just kind of blast their emails until you set up the meeting. Yeah, with any of yeah. these things. I mean, that's why they would have, that's why they, uh, um, medical sales, they hire a lot of women for those because they're oh, yeah. fucking meeting with these doctors who yep. get yeah. tempted. Oh, yeah. One of the biggest whores I knew in college <laughs> went into medical device sales, and she's doing really well. Right over there she's in Marine right? Michael, just so you know what kind of podcast this is, yeah. before you walked in, we were talking about Leo stint at Waterworld. Yeah. He was a stuntman, and he was uh, asked to resign. Waterworld. Yeah, you remember you've you've seen the show Waterworld, uh, uh, Universal. I, I, I thought you meant the movie from like no, when we were dude. ten. That he was, was young. No, he was, killed it as a stuntman. Three years. No, old. I was. Uh, yeah, the Waterworld, the stunt show that's at Universal Studios. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But but yeah. tell tell Michael what happened and why you were asked to leave. You know, I I might have pulled. I might have gotten a few too many blowjobs in parking lots uh, by employees that worked at Universal, and then you know eventually I did was forced to resign. Uh, because uh, had, of any sex, well, I, did, I never got caught. But once I got the the bachelor bullshit fame, uh, then my name got out. Yeah, th then all of these stories started coming out about the park, and and they basically asked me to resign. He got uh, me too. He's I got, dancing around the yeah, subject. Yeah, I got a little bit me too. Really? Yeah, man. But like you, you didn't do anything didn't disrespectful. Do anything. You just no. hooked up with girls. Exactly. And but then, then how, who, who like was so these girls? These girls. Someone that, fell in love with you and got mad or something. Exactly. I yeah. can explain it a little bit. He was the villain on the Bachelorette reality show. Yeah. So even though it was a bunch of producers in his ear, tell feeding him these asshole lines and telling him to be a dick, the women of America perceived him as this yeah. villain rapist. This villain, yeah. Exactly. Because of his reality show persona. And then, therefore, any girl with any sort of dirt on Leo came forward once the show was big. Exactly. So these girls were, like, saying things like, he stared at me weird, uh, you know, like, in 2018. She like, that was one. There was another one where it was, uh, you know, he, he flirted with me and made me uncomfortable, but with no, like, record of anything. Or one was, like, he asked me out, like, in my DMs, you know, things like oh, that. Oh, come on. And she had if that's the me. case, I'm going down. Exactly, dude. We're all going <laughs> we down. all are, especially Austin over there. Especially Austin. <laughs> he fucked a girl in his yeah. yellow Mustang the other week. But yeah, we drilled they, him on it a lot. The yeah, threesome they, didn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, we know. Uh, <laughs> 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 <Dude. laughs> I'm just good. kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah and, man, uh, also a dick picture was what really yeah, toppled the no, Tavia. Never send yeah, there's dude. none of them out. There's well, none of them out there. There are there could be right. There are many. I sent one to a transgender woman to this when one, I was 20 with my entire face in the picture yeah. and a limp cock. Yeah, my limp cock. Nobody has any business seeing this thing. You ever send a limp limp cock pic? It's not good. So fully torqued if you're sending it. 
good. Yeah. If I sent something, it was on Snapchat years ago. Well, that's what it was. And I then I Snapchat, know that yeah. they didn't, and I, I, w- I know that they didn't screenshot it right. from years ago, but I've never, like, could have used another and even phone. now, like, if a girl's, like, send me something, I'm like, nah, only in person. Nice. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just don't, yeah. I go, you can, she's like, well, why, why, why should I? I go, that's the game. That is the game. That's no, the game, no. because I was like, I can't, what if? Yeah, because you got a fucking blue check now, I go, buddy. what What if one day something comes back and you use it against me? I don't yeah. know if you're crazy. And exactly. Really, a, a dick picture is never going to progress you toward getting the pussy anyway. No, what does a yeah. dick picture ever accomplish? I, I disagree. I it, it does not. I think it helps. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, the, be- the best way to do I it trust is him. just FaceTime with a chick and then be like, let me come over. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So let's- We're hanging out. We've already FaceTime. That's a date. Yeah. Michael, if you don't mind me backing up a little bit, I was thinking about this when I was listening to your podcast interview today. When you were in college and then when you were working your little boiler room sales jobs, yeah, this was a big thing with me. Because when you're in college, your senior year or your entire time, actually, you have this little bubble of invincibility around you. When you're meeting with your grandma, when you're back for Thanksgiving in your hometown at the bar, people ask you what you're doing with your life. You just say, I'm in college. I'm a student. And they're like, OK, you're, you're respectable. I accept yeah. you. When you have a job, even if it's a slimy sales job, if you wear a tie and get a paycheck, people think you're doing OK. But once you're in Hollywood, living in a flea-bitten studio, pursuing stand-up, that's when people raise an eyebrow when you tell them what you're doing. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. For sure. I, 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 yeah, when you're, I, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, in the beginning, for, sh- for sure. I know not now. Now that you're opening for Dalia, things have changed. Sure. But when you first move out and you're pursuing stand-up and you're working part-time at a Barnes & Noble. I think that I, you don't hear it. You don't hear what? I don't think people are saying it to your face, but right. sure. But you're one. Sure. It sounds like I think, you're- I think a lot more people like like for instance, obviously, most importantly, my mom and dad. They were right. like, "What? Yeah, mm-hmm. what the fuck? You yeah. have a degree? You, you, Just go work with your brother in law. What are you doing? You talk a lot about your father like not being proud of you and stuff in your stand up a little bit. Uh, a little bit, but he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, All right, it's good, exaggerated. Good. No, I have a good mine's upbringing. Really, mine's but I, not I imagine, I imagine they the were first... for sure scared the first, yeah. the, uh, for the, for a while. I mean, yeah. like, for five years, for, probably for, until for, you... for a little like for. I I think the difference was when I was doing the sales jobs, I wasn't con- there wasn't consistent money and there was no passion and like my mom was paying for me a lot. Right. Whereas in the beginning of L.A., she was paying for me, but she saw a drive or some sort of like oh he, you know what he's not just partying his work ethic is there maybe yeah. but the, but maybe a little bit but she always had those little they all have those like little things like where they fucking mail you a birthday card with a fucking resume for a job that's out here in LA really? like there were like these little arguments for the first four or five years of yeah. like fights of like yeah. well you could get health insurance if you do and you're like what the fuck are you talking about because there's no tangible thing as an actor or a stand up like there's nothing like like especially stand up maybe as an actor you could be like look I got a co-star here but as a stand up you know you could be like look I'm, I'm good enough that I got on this show that's not like anything mm-hmm. it doesn't show like you, you, there's so many uh, accolades little personal accolades you get in stand up that don't make money right. or even put you on TV, but you know those are big wins for yourself. Fucking huge wins, so, yeah. So, so they don't see that, but I don't think like – I like you're right about what you're saying. Like who knows what people were thinking though. Mm-hmm. Nobody – there was like I, – I think I actually have one story where some guy would like was like, why are you doing that? I never thought you were funny. Like and I was just – I was like – Okay, I, I was just like, and we were. It was a friend, kind of like an acquaintance, but I was just like, why is he coming at me? I was like a year yeah. in, mm-hmm. but I was like, fuck you, and I was like yeah. trying to defend myself. But like most people, you don't know if they're. You assume they're just like, oh my god, he went out there to do that. He's crazy. And Michael, you also had the luxury of changing coasts, so you got away from your former life, which I think is a really important move. I tell people that. Cause I'm from Sacramento yeah. and I spent a lot of time after college in San Francisco. It wasn't until I came down to Southern California and broke the umbilical cord, so to speak, for my parents that I felt way better about myself and my self-esteem. But the problem for me was that after I graduated UCLA, which is where I went to school, I moved up to San Francisco and I was a busboy in a restaurant t- trying to make it as a comedian. So like chicks that were in sororities that I was trying to fuck two years ago were now ordering a Garganelli pasta as I was mopping up the table right next to them. So for me, Humility, bro. Dude, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it was and, good for him. And for me, there's this big shame thing about the comedy career that just now started to lift when things went better for me. Uh, how old are you? 30. Yeah, I mean, I, no, I, I definitely relate to that. But my, my whole thing was like, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it sucked. Like, I remember when I first moved to L.A., like, I was always, I still kept close with all my buddies. Like, all my college buddies and my South Florida friends, like, and they have all over the years come to shows and they love it and they're supportive. But, like, the things I missed out on that I knew, I was like, that sucked is, like, when you first get a job out of college and they would go on ski trips together or they do their little trips. Like, yeah. I, had to, I had to just be like, that's not going to be my life yeah. until later on. Like, yeah. I missed out on all of that. And... and and it, it, it's cooler now. It's cooler. Like the things like I, I I'll, I'll like run into diff- in different cities, like friends that I was like really good friends with in college. And like, they're just weird. To, they're just like, what's up, man? Like, they're just mm-hmm. like, they're, they're like oh, so excited. Right. And, like, this is like, I it, don't think of, I'm not as excited about but, it as yeah, you yeah. are. But I know when you walk yeah. into a room full of your old friends from college, I know your posture is a little better than it was when you first came to LA. You feel better about yourself now. Uh, that's how I feel. Uh, definitely. Uh, of, of, of course, of course. But the one thing I, I do think is important that I don't think a lot of people in the industry do is I, I am very close to all of those people who they have kids now and their families. Right. Like I, not every day, but like I keep in touch with them maybe once a month here, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or whatever or text or like a group chain that those guys do they never change towards me. Like there's no, they're still going to be like, they'll still make fun. Like there's a way to unplug with those real friends and let Mm -hmm. you know that you ain't shit. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it will, they'll never like some of the core fraternity brothers and friends will never be like, dude, they'll be like, Oh, that's cool. But they'll still be like, you're a fucking bitch. Were you You in a fraternity? Yeah. Which fraternity? Sigep. Beta theta pi. You, you beta, go a little yeah, There's no though, betas huh? in our fucking. There's no oh, beta shit in my fraternity. Dude. Whoa. <laughs> I was excited. Uh, I was excited that you uh, also were in a frat. Were you really on steroids? You said that yeah. in that picture? Yeah. Dude, nice. I did super tests when I was uh, a junior in college. Holy shit. It was that like a 12 week cycle. Me and my friend would just shoot each other up in the ass. Fuck. That man. was the gayest thing I've it. ever done. That's the gayest like, thing I've ever done. Grabbing the hip. Not the gayest thing two has ever done. Hey man, your quarterback. Um, but yeah, we, we yeah we'd shoot each other up and nice. fucking not even eat right, not like just like like it's crazy to think I was doing steroids and still partying and yeah. eating like and shit. Drinking. Were you drinking a lot? Too? Yeah, of yeah, course. Like so bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, but I'm saying like it's just crazy. Like if I would have had the diet and the way I work out today. With, with the, the steroids, roids. then I would have been like, it would have been great. I wonder yeah. what I would have looked like. Yeah. But like, yeah, I did it because it was like that was the cool thing to do. But also, we were getting ready for spring break, and I, <laughs> I wanted to get, I wanted, I always wanted to be the guy who got girls, and I never was till this day. And like, I, I always wanted, like, there was always someone who was more than that, uh, more of that than me. Mm. But I always admired that. Like, I liked. To, I like that alpha cool guy that like girls wanted, mm. but I was never like you know what I mean. I'm five ten and a half, five eleven with shoes, so it's just like like I'm I was never like that st- alpha stud. I was a mm. class clown in high school, but like I did fine in high school. Mm. In college, I did better, but mm. like I was never like the guy that like always got the girls, and I like always wanted that, and I think that was part of the steroid thing. Gotcha. I had a douchebag phase in college too. That's yeah. when I I didn't take it to steroids, but I was certainly on Cyto Gainer, a, trend, a little bit over the counter creatine. Yeah, that was high school. A lot of times it's hard to reconcile my now comedy career where I'm supposed to be like relatable and funny. When I look back at the days where I was spring breaking in Cabo, fucking twenty five pounds heavier than I am now, like fighting frat dudes on the beach. You, you, the biggest fucking you have a skater vibe. Are you not back I then? Mean, not back know? then. I had a buzz cut. You did I, skate. I deadlifted though. and squatted every day. You you were a skater at some point though, right? Not a good and one. And UCLA's no. fu- is not so much a party school, right? It's ch- it still has and, uh, it still frat, has a frat the scene. F- frat scene's gnarly there. It this, is the yeah. same culture, and it's even probably a little bit worse than what you experienced in Florida because the kids were all nerds in high school, and they're so insecure about their status. Every college has and that. And now they're yeah. the cool kids. There, every, every, even in my frat, there was kids who were like, all right, bro, you clearly were a fucking dork in high school. Like, every every kid has that. Uh, every, every frat has kids that were like that and yeah. stuff. But, like, yeah. No, I always pictured USC would have been really fun to yeah. party. Like, FSU was always compared to that. The, it was the East Coast ASU. Yeah. From what I'm understanding, and then I've been to fucking uh, Scottsdale a lot. ASU would have been the young, for sure. Uh, that's my crazy. Yeah. The young Asian boy out there in the living room went to ASU. Really? You can talk to him about it. He probably had a lot of fun. Oh, I mean, there's so many ASU kids out in LA. He fucked. I think he fucked uh, three girls there. Well, he, 
<laughs> he I should not talk. He, he had pedestrian talk. numbers. We he was on a dry spell for a while this year. We helped him out. He's having sex with a, a woman that has, uh, she, I believe, a, a boyfriend. Or, he uh, might not love that we're sharing this in the oh, podcast. Yeah, fuck but it's Nobody, okay. I always forget. Say his name. Nobody yeah, has I didn't say his name. I didn't say his name. The audience, but uh, you know, it's okay. It, so any any uh, any frat stories you got? Were you the funniest guy in your frat? I don't think so. There was a lot. Our, my frat was funny, but like, uh, you know, I mean, dude, there's a frat. There's 140 kids. Not everybody likes each other. And right. then there's like crews. Like I, the kids I hung out with were, were very funny mm. for sure. But like in a different way, I, 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 like a clingy, funny way. I don't even know how to explain it. But like I, uh, I guess like, I don't know. You, we were all funny, but like it's a different type of funny to like create jokes and create humor as opposed to mm. just like being funny amongst each other. I don't I, 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 like even when I was going back to when I worked at the pharmaceutical sales and we were all in cubicles. That's when I first started knowing. I was like, oh, th- I might do this. Yeah. My best friend, I got him a job there who's now the pharmacist. He had graduated UF and he, he just needed a job while he was in pharmacy school or g- getting into pharmacy school. And I, there would be like a we're in a room maybe full of like 16 cubicles and I would stand up and like make everyone laugh. <laughs> nice. But I had no idea what I was doing. I don't nice. even know. I can't even remember it's what I was saying. Yeah. I don't. I was just like I don't know what I was. I wish I remembered. Like was yeah. I like sharing ideas? But I remember whatever I was doing. My my best friend AJ at the time was like, "Oh, that's funny." He's like, "Bro, I'm telling." He was like, "You should do stand up. You should yeah. do stand up." And I used to always. He planted the seed to where I was like, "Maybe I should." And and I was, at that time I was like, I- "I'm an adult. I could do what I want. Actually, I could do this. Maybe." Yeah. Leo's asking about frat humor. Frat humor is more practical. Mm. Yeah. The funniest thing that happened in my frat was playing through where if a guy's hooking up in a bedroom with a chick, three or four guys come in with socks on their cocks and pretend to be playing golf on the floor <laughs> right as the couple fucks on the bed. That's yeah, the most- like, like, or, or like another frat thing was like uh, my buddy wearing a thong uh, on uh, spring break to, and, and like dancing with his ass out like you know what I mean like that shit was like uh, he's funny he's doing that and I'm like I I could have done that or like yeah you know what I mean like or like dancing silly at a party like silly dancing shit it wasn't like humor shit unless it was like witty shit like Mm. making fun of but I you don't remember that shit I say resurrect the thong thing on your act right now dude I like it no way yeah that's content for Instagram live yeah Yeah. dude I like it we should all walk around in thongs for a video I would not look good in the thong well your ass I have a get... really flat ass it's genetic I'm not convinced any amount of squats or so, creatine or roids will do anything about it I'm pretty thick from what you told me Sacramento San Francisco UCLA how the fuck did you end up a Bengals fan this is a joke yeah, every he's... year you're not a Bengals fan oh let me give you the background I announced in 2015 or something because I wanted to get into football. I was starting to get a little interested in it. I didn't really have a team. I didn't want to be a bandwagon guy and go for SF, which was good around that time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to look up the win-loss record from last season. I'm going to go to the very bottom of the list. Who's ever at the bottom, I'm going to choose that team and start fucking cheering. It's Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They were terrible all the way up. They were starting to get a little good this last season, but they almost were even. They had a quarterback who threw for 30 touchdowns. I said, you know what? They're getting too fucking good. I need a new team. Let me look at the bottom of the standings this year. Cincinnati Bengals. A running back who beat the shit out of his girlfriend? That's kind of funny. I'm going to buy his jersey. And then, of course, right when I relinquish my Tampa Bay fandom, they get fucking Tom Brady and Gronk. And now they're this super team who would actually be great to watch. Yeah. Well, okay. So it wasn't real. So you're not even a football fan. I I bought a jersey, motherfucker. You're a a Kings fan. Hey, those stats. He loves, loves football. Do you love? Do you like basketball? Are you a big basketball fan? That was mine from back in the day when the Kings were actually good. I've since stopped caring. That was about twenty years ago. All right. Well, nothing really is. I'm a, I'm a football fan. I just don't really have a team. Well, look, is my thing. Are you a, are you more of a football fan than a baseball fan, or because you? you I am now. I, oh. I wasn't. I was a huge baseball fan until about you know two thousand. Like when did when when I say football was ahead of baseball was probably around two thousand one or two. Really? Yeah, but although like I was I would follow baseball really closely until about two thousand five six, mm-hmm. and then yeah, it just it just wasn't the same as what it was. I don't know if that's just how it is when you grow up you like like baseball or something, but baseball in the nineties was amazing. It was amazing. And yeah. then also you know I've had some fucking rough years. But also amazing years as a Marlins fan. Yeah. But so, I don't know. It's just like it's not the same as it was to me. I I don't know as many players. I to me it's actually down to three. It's football, basketball, baseball. Oh wow. And I, when I was a kid, it was baseball, 
football, yeah. basketball. You did it. He did an incredible impression of uh, of uh, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire's batting stances on his Instagram. I was impressed. Yeah, I got I, I got yeah. I got Griffey uh, Griffey Sheffield and Bonds next. That's good. That's a Those thing. Are my it's, guys. Some people can do impressions of batting stances, and some people can't, dude. It's like yeah, a thing. I, I, can, I don't do impressions, but yeah. I could do like mannerisms. Yeah, mannerisms. Like I could right. I could walk like somebody if I know them well enough. Nice. I can hit the yeah. ball not, as far as. It's not really a <laughs> skill. Not really a skill for that. Oh man, but uh, what yeah. is it? What is it about football? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Just for me, the thing I like about football is that it's the sport with the highest likelihood of getting carted off the field in a stretcher. Jesus. The stakes are higher. There are fewer games, so every game I'm tuned in, especially if I know the stories that of is the players. True. Stakes are for sure higher. Yeah, the stakes are high. The stakes are higher, and it's more of a, a chess match. It's yeah. just a, yeah. it's a very – there's so many things that have to go right for things to work out. Mm-hmm. Whereas like – and then basketball is different. Like one guy can co- totally take over. Right. That's what's mm-hmm. awesome about basketball. Yeah. And then baseball, it's just because of what we're used to. I, mean, I think it just goes with everything else. Like we want more, 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 more yeah. videos, more content, more – like it's just that slow style paced thing – was big before internet and like yeah. now our brains are trained to like we want quicker 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 i and played it for so long that i can't i can't, it's still my first love I, I could just never i can watch a game and be entranced just thinking about what the pitcher's doing I and think, shit i think that's the only reason like i, I people like you can watch i was like i can watch baseball because i can enjoy watching the a, a great a pitcher have a great game yeah like if you don't know haven't played baseball you, it's not fun to watch a no hitter. No, yeah, you're, it but, seems like, very but, boring. I, I, but knowing what goes through a no hitter, right? You're like, then you're like, this damn. is crazy. Like, it's like crazy, he's right. got some good shit today. Yeah, he's got some. And a, every guy on the other team wants to fucking break this up. Yeah, exactly. So. It's it, yeah, and then you can see the anxiety in like everybody, especially towards the seventh inning of a no hitter. Like the pitcher, nobody's talking to him in the dugout. Then yeah. uh, the other team is just like fucking thinking about bunning and shit. And if they do, they're considered bitches. So they can't do that. But some, but sometimes that happens. Anyway, sure. Whatever they can snarling. do to just get one hit yeah, and fuck that hit. guy over. So. Yeah. So he doesn't go down in history. I'm gonna There's bring a certain amount. I'm gonna bring back to comedy. Michael, what was your moment? <laughs> He's like, I don't give a fuck about baseball. Yeah, he fucking hates baseball. No, dude. it's true. It's true. I, I don't hate baseball. You've seen me in a batting cage. Did he? What are you doing over there? He Ross? definitely was one of the white kids that got the batting lessons growing up. You know what I mean? He was one of those privileged fucks. You know what I mean? Well, was, we're not all fucking <laughs> six six with fucking thirty eight inch biceps, so. <laughs> Uh, I took down a lot of balls and batting cages, took down a lot of mailboxes on country streets. That's what it was like when I was fucking going up. Uh, Comedy. Yeah. How do you go from, I assume, the very depressing open mic scene of Los Angeles to your first opening tour with Dalia? Was that, did you just get asked by him to come up and open for him? And was that the big moment? Um, I don't know. Do you have any talk show sets? How did you break into the next level? Well, I, first of all, I enjoyed doing open mics a lot. Like I had fun doing those, mm. so that made it easier. Um, I where found, where would you go? Everywhere. Just I mean, Anywhere. when I yeah, when I started out, I I uh, would yeah, just I don't know. There was like websites and stuff where to go, and then I would like some guy Dean Del Rey I think was doing this when because he started a, a little before me, but like we, like counting so like he would count how many open mics he did. So I was uh, able to like turn my competitiveness mm. and be like, Oh, I want to do, I want to, I want to be able to tell people I did like 500 open mics in a year. How many, so a week? I did that. Like, how many a week were you knocking out? When I started hitting the, I would try to at least 10 and then to, to like 15, 10 to 15. That's what I you mean, there do. might've been a week where I hit 18, but that was so hard in LA. Like where in New York, you could do fucking 18 easily. But like in LA, like there was a time, like I would, I would just, it, I, I would be like, let's at least hit ten. That was the the number I wanted to hit because LA is tough, you know, because there's so it's so spread out. Right. And then even if you do get up at one, you might not make the next one, and then you have a, fu- a late yeah, one. And then so you're gonna have one mic where you're doing a a set for two people. But at that point, you're like, it's just giving you thick skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, open mics, people in Los Angeles, they're not even comedy clubs. Sometimes I did a couple in sandwich shops after yeah. hours. Yeah. There's a, there's a spotlight. There's a miserable comedian running the thing who is slightly more experienced than the miserable comedians in the seats. Yeah. You get up there, you just do your material looking up at the ceiling because nobody's laughing at you. Everybody hates you. Everybody wants you to fail. (laughs) 
That's the scene, right? But, but yeah, but there's a way to like, you know, that's the competitive level. Right. Like, let me get someone to just smile. Exactly. You know yep. what I mean? And then like you have the people who work there and you're yeah. like, you're like, oh, that guy likes me. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So whatever. He fucking cares. And then you just became thick skin and then you learn that like, I felt like you could, you could do enough open mics and nobody in there could laugh, but you could know, no, that's funny. Mm-hmm. That's funny for, for me. I feel like that's funny. I don't know. I don't know yet, but like it gave me a thick enough skin to like just not give a fuck for sure. Mm-hmm. You can tell the difference between a comedian who's done thousands of open mics uh-huh. and a guy who was a very successful actor uh-huh. that went into comedy and he does comedy and he gets to go on big shows because he has a big name uh-huh. and you can be successful and do well, but there's something you can't fake. There's some, and, and there's a lot of comedians, I'm not going to name them, that are are doing well and they work, but they never did the open mic scene because yep. they didn't have to yep. mm-hmm. because they killed it as actors or something like mm-hmm. that, right. which is fine. Everybody has their own journey. But those guys, there's something they are. There's something they're missing, and you can't fake it. Is this a good analogy? It's like learning a language and always retaining your American accent. An example: one of my favorite comedians of all time, who's not a stand-up, Adam Carolla. Yeah, you know Adam. Yeah, Adam's been doing sets at the Laugh Factory all the time. Yeah, and there's something about his stand-up you can't really put your finger on it, where you can feel like he's speaking a language that he learned in his older age. It's all that because they don't have the. They just don't have the the rawness of like, uh, it, it's it, it's almost like they're performing it too mm-hmm. much. Like, exactly. and everybody's performing when they first start out, but like, there's the certain like I don't give a fuck right. at, that you have from doing all those open mics and then mm-hmm. learning how to get good and then also performing in front of crowds and knowing like hey, this joke is good and I know it works so. You know. it, it's also a rhythm too and I yeah. obviously know way less about stand-up than you do yeah. but from what I've observed is that amateur stand-ups and guys like Corolla who again he's my yeah. hero on the radio sure. but stand-up you're talking to the audience in a setup punchline setup punchline format and there's a natural ebb and flow of like tension, laughter, tension, laughter. And that meter is just a little bit off where like, I can tell the guy came from acting or right. came from radio they're less conversational for sure, less conversational. Like that, yeah. They're they're, just, so they're more like scripted, stilted, and the conversational comfort you get from open mics helps I, you yeah, meet that I, format. I, 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 I can't pinpoint it. It's just something you can't fake. Right. That's all I'm saying. But it's more like, yeah, I think that like you could like – you could th- throw them off with a heckler and like maybe they'll deal with it and it will be fine but they'll deal with it differently maybe that the heckler you know I, mean? I think the hecklers yeah. is when you really so, see it right you see the like, experience on script they're like right. this is what i do this is how i do it this is how i do it yeah. like whereas i'm like I'll, I'll have my set list and and you'll see me one week and you've heard the jokes but they're still different every yeah. week mm-hmm. that's why you can you, you can definitely I mean? like, see comedians multiple yeah. times when when they have that kind of experience yeah, we, yeah. we we forget about that sometimes right. I'll, I'll like you know sometimes when you when we do mark show i'm like mm-hmm. half the crowd's been here for more and, and then i'll get in my head a little bit i'm like they know my whole fucking do mm-hmm. they not know how comedy works but then you're like and then like you'll talk to <laughs> you're, someone you're afraid of saying the same material to a crowd but I mean, that's, that's what comedy it. is yeah. you have a routine yeah, but then so you funny. forget you talk to them afterwards right. like oh well it's different and, you're like, and you want to oh, hear yeah, it, it is good. different when you hear a good joke though yeah, you yeah. want to hear it again I don't I don't mind I, I, I go all the time yeah but I, in my head I'm like oh yeah. fuck you know what yeah. I mean yeah so but and also it's ego thinking that everybody else is familiar with your act as you are yeah yeah, yeah they don't. exactly it's I mean when I rewatch a Louis C.K. special I've seen 30 times I like I'm like I kind of know where this joke is going but the the punchline is always surprising but, but the timing will always be different too like it's just like the joke is gonna sound different on a different night depending mm. on the the energy in the room and stuff like that why did we get into that what was the fucking i was asking oh. you because for me as a youtuber i can pinpoint three moments where my career went from nothing to something something to oh, a respectable oh, career oh, 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 how did, oh so doing the open mics and then um I would hang out once I got open mics. I would hang out at all the clubs and just like let me watch all the good guys. And then I I picked my favorite ones and I would always go watch them. And then you, if you're around enough, you just start conversating with people. And I I kind of got lucky early. I mean, not everybody does, but like I was two years in and Bobby Lee was like, 
you're gonna come you're gonna come do the San Diego with me you're gonna come do the road and That's I was like nice, okay man. and then I learned about that whole game I was like oh shit there's like a you you could host and and you perform for these big crowds and when you get in front of big crowds you you learn how to write better for right. sure mm-hmm. and you learn what doesn't work and then you learn the whole game about how like getting into the clubs and stuff like that can, can you walk me through that the first night you opened for Bobby Lee so you're going from little tiny showcase shows where it's like you you sold whatever tickets the, the audience is like those are your sure, friends you're, you're, or the your, other your comedians first friends. shows you're getting on are like bar shows or something yeah. like that you're yeah. getting in like little bar shows and you're like your, your buddy's like yeah, and you're asking nobody's asking you to go on them you just you have to in the beginning you're like hey can I do your show and they're like fine they like you yeah. uh, or they're your friend I started a show that's like the best way to do it is you start a show mm-hmm. in a bar and it's never good but you host it and then you're on and then like ask other bar shows you're like uh, some like like Jay Davis had a bar show at the parlor and I would cold open it you know you go up you'll go up once your skin's thick you'll go up anywhere but you're doing bar shows you're not really doing a club show really and then when you first do a club show you fucking shitting your brains out and you're how not many, good how many people were in the club that you opened for Bobby Lee oh, so the Bobby Lee show that was the first big show I ever did it was New Year's Eve oh, it was shit. New Year's it was New Year's Eve shit. 2012 so going into 2013 what is that like one two five thousand seater no 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 at the time it's 200 American comedy club in San Diego right, right. so it's like 200 people but okay. like uh I, I had to have done a show in a club before that I just or I might have done like Irvine or Brea where there was like only 50 people but whatever you do you get on shows like that you'll do shows outside of Hollywood I, I probably didn't get up at the obviously Laugh Factory store or improv in the beginning but like you would get on like other clubs like you know, there's like the Madhouse in San Diego. So you were you were in, uh, in club rooms when you first started, maybe for like 20 people, because there's like these shows you can get on, and you find out a joke works, and you learn a little bit, but you still don't learn how to build a routine until you start doing the road a lot. Mm-hmm. So even with Bobby, that was a big show. He's like San Diego, so that was exciting, sold out, and uh, it was uh, 2012 New Year's Eve, and first show I go up and I bomb straight for 10 minutes. Straight up 10 minutes, Dude. Bobby walks out of the green room in, at American Comic Club, the green room. While you're to, bombing? While yeah, you're on stage? Yeah, while I'm on stage, opens it, slams the door, walks through the crowd. I'm bombing so bad you hear someone in the crowd go, Bobby. And like I'm just like on there and I get off, the feature goes on and then like uh, – I remember the feature. The feature at the time was Dean Del Rey actually. Wait, wait so, so he comes out though. Does he save you? Does he come just, up on the stage? No, he just walks in out, slams the door, and walks through the crowd. And in my head, I go, "Wow, he's really mad." And how bad? <laughs> he's how so bad is? Mad. Because I have definitely <laughs> to this day, it's the worst bomb I've ever had. And I, I want to hear more about this because I've what I think bombing is. I've done it. Yeah. I've definitely bombed a couple of my oh, shows. This is a bomb. It's silent. Totally silent, silent the yeah. entire time. And then a, I know it's every so comic. silent that you hear someone in the crowd go, "Bobby." Bobby, right? Yeah, it's silent, man. Huh? Like Even maybe a cut. Like people are like awkwardly going. <laughs> Oh, you know, God. there's some of that. Yeah, of course. Were you loading up on what you thought was your strongest joke in your set? Like, this will win him back. This will win sure, him back. Like, Say that one. No, like, I didn't even go. Like, I, I, I wish I – maybe I – like, there's no way I could even bomb today. Like, if I wasn't doing well, I would just, like, make fun of myself and be like, all right, so what do you guys want to talk about? Obviously, I'm not doing something right. Or, like, I don't know. I would just be that, able to, like, be yeah. present. In the, yeah. I would – when you're starting out and you bomb, you're just not present. Right. Like, whereas now, if I was not having a good setup, big, like, okay, I would identify that my material's not working and I mm. would, like, ma- like talk to the crowd and be like, what did I do wrong? I would, like, be so honest. I'd be like, w- w- why do you guys not like me? What did I do wrong? Yeah. But you, you know just... what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just, it wouldn't happen. But in that moment, I was just like, I guess I was, like, trying to, like, get anything to laugh, but I was also trying to, not to, like, panic. Cause I like and filled the time, and then I remember I brought Dean, and he was just like awful. Like I remember, like he said that into the mic. The no, next guy up. I don't know what he said, but I knew he he gave me the he let me know that it was not good. So oh, he was shit. the guy who was bringing out Bobby, like the guy. No, between. I bring out Bobby. He was the feature, so oh, I still have to go feature. back on and be like, "Are you guys ready for your headline?" Oh shit! You know, I'm the host. Wait, wait, so oh, you're the ho- he was I'm hosting. The host. I'm hosting. hosting. Okay, so uh, you were hosting, and then somebody opened for Bobby, and then yeah, there was Bo- there's a host feature headline. So the opener talked shit about your act to the crowd right as you were walking into the side of the no, stage. No, I don't know. He might have, which is he has every right to to yeah. address the energy in the room. Yeah. If someone bombs really bad, I beg. Like, 
okay, give it up. Like, I don't know what I would do. I'm, it's not something I, sc- I would script. I would just, if the room is so weird, I would sure address it. I have before on, on, on another show. But if it's not that weird, I will just fucking be funny and make him laugh. Yeah. But no, he, I don't know what he did. All I know is I, I was dealing with Bobby as soon as I got up. I'm saying when I was like, are you ready for your next guy? When we did our like shake our hands, like he looked at me and let me know that it was really bad. It was like, all eye contact, it, body he, language he was, stuff. Yeah, he was like, rawr, rawr, rawr. Like grunting and shit. What happens there? I assume that kind of put a dent in your New Year's Eve. You weren't feeling great at the after party. No, there's two shows. That's show one. So I get off stage. Bobby's like, you fucking yelling at me. I uh, he, he's, Legitimately yelling at you? Oh, yeah. He's like, he's like, people paid a hundred fucking dollars. You can't oh, fucking do shit. that. He's like, I'm so fucking mad. Then, he, then I walk in the back and then the owner at the time or he still is the owner uh J- justin he's just like he's like so what he's he actually you know this guy has a bad rep uh and a lot of people don't like this guy but mm. he actually was like so he talked to me he's like so why do you think you didn't have a good set and we were, i was like i don't know he's like do, were, were you having fun i was like no he's like well do you think you can have fun i was like yeah he's like maybe you just try to have fun on the next show <laughs> yeah and i was like okay and i knew in my head even though this isn't true, I told yeah. myself, I go, well, there's another show. There's a, there was a an East Coast New Year's show and then a West Coast New Year's show. And I and I, I knew, I was like, if I, in my head, I was like, if I don't have a good sh- set on the next show, I'm done. Like, I'm going to have to move home. Oh, That's man. what I was telling myself. I was like, oh, I'm done. My career's done. He, Bobby's going to go tell everybody. That's oh, what I was getting shit. at. That's Bobby's the kind gonna, of shit I wanted so to I hear about. So I was in my head and I was like, oh, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Like, I have to have a good set. Like, I God. better, I have to like figure out what to do on the next show and like Justin he was just like you know just like have fun I, I you know just I think just relax and like you know I don't know what happened to this day I, I'm trying to think like why whatever maybe the first joke didn't work and I kept going but either way I knew I had to like relax and Bobby yelling at me I'm gonna say I disagree with Bobby's motivational style sure 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 but I could handle it thankfully but thank, thankfully I was like okay I gotta like like fuck it yeah I mean obviously I wouldn't have done that to a right, younger comment, right, I would have been right. like, "You fucking more." I would have been like, I would have probably just laughed and be like, right. "This is this is the game, baby." This is the game, right? You know I would have I mean? started drinking. That's the only way I could have gone out and faced that second crowd. Yeah, dude. But Did you drink? But if you know, I mean, he's he's from South Korea, man. That yeah. they're hard. So that's yeah, how yeah, he yeah. fucking, you know, that's how he did it, and it worked. And the second show, I did fine. It wasn't mm-hmm. a bomb. I probably wasn't killing, but mm-hmm. I didn't bomb. And life went on. You what, know what changed? I mean? That's a mystery to me because I don't do stand up on a regular basis. How can you make little adjustments in your act that take you from bombing to not bombing? Well, I think I just literally was just like make sure sh- like have have fun, have fun no matter what. Like I'm like like or like be I think probably like uh warm up the crowd like what's up is everybody excited for-? i mm-hmm. think i had walked on stage and go what's up happy new year's everyone so da 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 gotcha. da da and people are like what you know what i mean like no. any time i i see a younger comic i'm like when you a host like just be real like because people aren't ready for jokes right away they're all just settled in they're getting drinks yeah let me get two vodka tonics a guy comes on stage mm-hmm. and all of a sudden he's talking about something you're like what what is he doing i missed it rather than being like, what's up how are we doing yeah. this is fun it's new year's eve make some noise for fucking new year's eve right. you guys excited here bobby put some noise like just be a real yeah. A, yeah your job is to be a host but when you start out you're like i want to be funny i want people to love me mm-hmm. nah your job is to be fucking host right. which a host is be a human be not a you're not a comic you're a goddamn fucking host so be a human being Mm. one of the lessons my improv i take a lot of improv one of the things he taught us one of the first days of classes is that the audience hates a nervous tense performer they can sense it it's like watching a news anchor who's stuttering who's misreading lines off the prompter you want to watch through your fingers you feel so bad for the guy when you feel the same thing for a stand-up comic you're feeling bad for him. You want him to get off the stage and you're and in that mood. You can't laugh. Yeah. So that's one of the things we learned in stand up is that, or excuse me, one of the things I learned in improv is that when you're getting a suggestion from the crowd, keep your chin up, just eye him down and just have your hands limp at your sides. Yeah. My instructor always talks about Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell would just mean mug the crowd when he was getting yeah. suggestions. That's how he conveyed confidence. That's how the crowd knew he was in control yeah. and he was training them to laugh. When you yeah. come out there a little limp-wristed bitch like Austin would be if he did stand yeah. up, the crowd's gonna eat you alive. Yeah, I mean the the part of, part of it is uh, yeah, I mean trying to keep him involved. Ener- energy is a real thing. I mean that's one <laughs> yeah. thing about life 
whether I don't not to go deep, but like you I, I don't deep, know what man. happens when you die, but I know energy no, is a I real know. thing. Energy leaves you, but so like, you could walk in a room, not even stand up. Like you could be in a room with a bunch of people yeah. and just be like, it's weird or something like that. That's a real thing. So yeah. like, even if something is weird, like if, if if a crowd's weird and I'm doing a show and people are like, yeah, the crowd's weird or energy, like so, it's hard because sometimes you'll see comics come on stage and be like, oh, what's up with you guys today? I hear you fucking be weird. Or some yeah. people will be like, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna do my shit and yeah. like, and then sometimes they they adjust to that. They're like, oh, this guy gets it. He's having a fun time. Or, you know, somebody could be like, oh, you fucking, like, Bill Burr, big, you fucking little bitches. What, why Burr. are you guys being fucking all weird and shit? Because I'm up here talking about mm. how women should get paid right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. whatever. And then they're laughing at themselves for, like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Energy's a real thing. It's just, like, how to deal with it is, is there's no rules. It's just, right. you know, you can't, even in improv, you can't, like, some nights there's just a weird energy. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, after Kobe died, there was a weird energy in the in the area like yeah. you can't hide that yeah i'm sure it was it was weird doing shows right after that happened yeah it was like you, you, people didn't bring it up but like after anything like even after this when when it comes back right. you can't go on stage and just start doing stand-up and not bring it up yeah, like Corona. unfortunately everybody's gonna talk about it oh. so it's gonna be redundant but you have to right i have to go on stage and talk about what my life was for the last three months yeah you know what i mean like regardless it's gonna be fucking hacky and annoying but everybody who is gonna have to talk about corona yeah how, i think how do you not i think keep maintaining that haircut so you can take off your hat and at least get a sight gag from the audience well i mean i don't know if that will help <laughs> a me sight gag. Yeah, a little sight gag get a quick chuckle i think the time i can do stand-up it will be growing back so do you, do, um, i'm saying maintain it just keep fucking working on it i'd rather have your hair oh well mine yeah. i'm wearing this hood because yeah, it's he's he's so nice, long and he's got a nice mullet dude going it's i nice. do have a mullet because somebody's sister couldn't come over and give me a little trim I'm sorry. So, hey, that ain't my fault. So now that we're on the topic of sisters, can we talk about some pussy maybe or about what, what's going on Michael, in that you, department? Are you yeah. cool talking about some pussy? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, kind of reminds that? me, Ryan, did you talk, I, I, think, I feel like you've said this before, you kind of talk like Ryan Gosling-ish. I get that. Yeah, I get yeah. that sometimes. Can I say yeah. this? Uh, Ryan, Ryan yeah. Gosling... Who's the other guy you're obsessed with other than Crystalia? Derek, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter, Crystalia. I'm not Jeter, obsessed, Chris I'm not obsessed with Crystalia. The three men this guy would blow. That is on the not true. Delia, that is Gosling, not true. That Jeter. That is not true. I it's would so never, true. I would and never. Like, and it's like I have such a close relationship with Jeter, too, because like he owns the Marlins. So. There it is, dude. There it is. I do love Derek Jeter. He was my childhood hero, man. That, that's not true, He's right? Fine. Or is that true? I'm sorry if I missed the joke there. What? No, he does own part of the Marlins. But he do owns. you actually have a close relationship with Jeter? No, but emotionally, because emotionally, now, like, yeah. now, now I like have to like support him because like yeah. he he's part of the marlins organization although yeah. i think he did that just to pay them back because he they beat him in 03 yeah yeah but maybe dude i was fucking him right yeah. now if you knew jeter and delia this guy would pay good money for those that phone numbers not true i yeah i was i'm a long time fan i've been watching you know i've been going to laugh factory for 10 yeah, no, years i get it yeah, I mean, yeah. he's he's, he pro, was funny, he's prolific that's fine yeah and i just have to try to get away from that umbrella so oh it's, dude you were in your own umbrella i dude you killed it you killed it more oh, than thanks. him the night the last time i oh, saw thanks, you do man. stand up man is that Appreciate frustrating it. though to be always associated with the leah no it's it's uh i mean because what if i wasn't <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. Everybody's journey. I listen, but, in, ten, in 10 years, people won't say it. Right. So it's yeah, fine. Exactly. So it's like some pe sometimes people over the years would be like, well, how long are you going to open for him? I was like, well, when I can't do Carnegie Hall with him. Like, right. What do you, what do you yeah. mean? Like, I don't like to me, the end game is how do I get how do I become the best or how do I get better stage time? And right. I'm getting the best stage time. So right. it's like people are so fast to making it. And I'm like, bro, this is a 20 or 20 year business. This so it's is, like yeah. to me, I'm like, yeah, I mean. Sometimes I think that I think the only way it hurts is peer respect a little bit sometimes, mm -hmm. but then that's just some weird backward shit. You know what I mean? Like, so you're saying other comics you run into yeah, in clubs? Maybe they might be like, ah, oh, he's just a, like, like he's he, you're you're just an opener, or you just have this because of him, or something like that. Is but that for like, people who are above you, or for people who are slugging it out in clubs? I don't know what they think. That's just maybe me projecting. I I'm curious. I, I don't know. I I I for sure think it. I for sure think some pop, some people might not like me because of it, mm -hmm. or they might think I'm just like coattailing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or what they say? You know, they say stuff like that. But I, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to fucking get as much stage time as possible. And I agree. I think it's that's the only. I I think I heard a quote. I I didn't read the book, but I think 
Sebastian had mentioned, someone said one time, he opened for... Sebastian uh, Monacasco. What's his name? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah Sebastian Monacasco. Maniscalco. That guy... He uh, opened for... Uh, fuck, what's his name? For years when he was starting out. Um, fuck, why am I blanking on his name? You know, I don't know. The, the one who... The, the old time... Who had uh, 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 who's the Italian guy? guy? Ita- Dom Herrera? No, no, no. no. Uh, fuck. Well, I figured it was an Italian guy. Yeah, no, yeah. you know the guy who would smoke on stage and fucking. Oh, Ron White? No, 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 no. no. Doug Stanhope? That's no, a little no, too no. recent. Uh, he would smoke on stage. I should know this. The fuck. Come on, you'd be like, hey, you fucking motherfuckers with this Italian oh, jacket. Oh, uh, a uh, uh, fucking Andrew Dice Clay? Yeah, Andrew Dice. Andrew he opened, Dice. For, he opened Hickory, for... Hickory Dickory Doc. Hickory Dickory. Yeah, he opened yeah. for Dice Clay for years. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, like Sebastian's been in comedy like now 25 huge. plus years. Yeah. You didn't know who he was 10 years ago. Right. He was 15 years in. I'm not 15 years in. He I'm worked at uh, Four Seasons as a yeah. waiter. He so was a fucking just, service guy. So I don't know. Stage time, stage yeah. time, stage time. So it's like, no, I mean, I don't, I don't mind it. I mean... It's it's it, dude. It's great and it's awesome and the opportunities are unbelievable. But like, yeah, eventually you have to build your own kingdom. But like, also just keep getting good. But but also, no. I don't know wa- what's right. No, I I don't know what's right but right you, now. You, I just want to go up. But you have to be you have to be good to open up for a guy for any big comedian. You, 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 you they don't want you to thing. suck, right? I mean, yeah, come yeah, on. yeah. I yeah. I think most of the good guys are yeah. like that. Like most of the people. I don't know how other guys are, but like most of the people like. Even the people Rogan fucks with, sometimes people be like, I don't like his style, but they have something. Right. It, it might not be your cup of tea, but that guy has something and it works. Do you right. mean his openers, Rogan's openers? I don't even know who he, opens for Rogan. He just has different guys, but he there's a lot of people associated with him over the years. Yeah. I mean, there's more than five. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he got Tom Segura going, Burt Kreischer. Wow. Ari Shafir, Tony Hinchcliffe, you know what I mean? Mm. Theo, even for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, there's all these guys, and not everyone's your cup of tea, but, like, they, they, they have something they were doing right. But, yeah, I mean, like, listen, at the end of the day, I started to do one-nighters, like, until I can fucking pay my bills. Like, why why, why would I not? But, right. I mean, I, there's pros and cons. I don't know. There's no rules. All I know is I got to keep getting up. That's yeah, all no. I can do, and... I don't know if it's going to hurt my career or help, and we'll, we'll, time will tell. It's, it's you know gonna what I mean. Help. I don't it's know. Help, dude. That's you mentioned. Comedy is a twenty-year business. There are some guys who have careers that stretch out 30, 40 years. Right. That's one of the things that feels great about it. Yeah. Is in comedy, being thirty or forty is like being twenty in the music business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's comforting to me because I have a really anxious mind, and I'm always nervous that somebody else is going to make it, or I'm going to fall out of favor, or I'm going to have to go back to working as a busboy in San yeah. Francisco. My thing, your opening, the thing that's taken you ahead right now, my thing, my equivalent is YouTube. And sometimes it feels kind of lame. I, I'm like, ah, out of college, I should have just started slugging it out in open mic rooms. Sure. Doing the, the traditional, like, core, cool path. But fucking be it YouTube or be it opening for a big star, man. You got to do whatever you got to do to get I mean, ahead. I, I'm trying to do the YouTube shit, too, man. I, 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 I'll, I'll do everything. Like, now I'm just, like, trying to push my, my podcast on YouTube. I'm like, let's get these numbers up because that – let like to me, I'm like if I could grow that, then I'm I'm in control of everything. I don't mm-hmm. need anyone else. Yeah, I, don't right. have, I don't have to wait for fucking executives to be like, hey, we want to cast you in something. Absolutely, suck my dick. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to. I have they my, don't have to. The money's once good I on sell, YouTube, dude. Once I could sell fucking tickets, right? Mm-hmm. I'm game. Mm-hmm. Right. I love to act. I want to act more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right now, it's hard as a white straight male, yeah, but I would yeah. love to act more. But right now. I'm not going to fucking chase things. So in the meantime, let me build my fucking crowd and try to make money selling tickets yeah. for the time being. But yeah, I mean, dude, there's no fu- – here's the thing is nobody knows what they're fucking doing. Mm-hmm. And there's no blueprint. The only thing I've realized in the 10 years I've been in L.A. is is if you fucking don't like have some horrible addiction – so like you get like you're a big drinker or drugs, you know or, what I mean? Or, or cock for our producer. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Or if you fucking take too much cock. Like if you don't have a bad addiction, <laughs> if you just keep creating and don't stop, yeah. it's inevitable. Right. Everybody yeah. will make it at some point. At some whatever point. make it is to you, mm-hmm. you'll you'll get so good at something or you'll find your lane. Yeah. I've I've watched guys just in my small time like 
do something and maybe it, it pushes them this way and all of a sudden they, they keep doing that and then it forms into a, like a little career for them. Like I've watched guys start and stand up and become huge writers and create a show yeah. and then they have a show and then stand. Yeah. I, I watch stand-up comics keep going and then fail and fail and then all of a sudden like I remember when Theo's fucking first special came out it bombed and he was bummed out and now he's a fucking huge theater act that yeah. is so successful now. His podcast kills it too. Yeah. I'm sure he you makes mean, have, yeah. multiple six figures off just his podcast podcast he, yeah yeah i would he, he's a millionaire let's just yeah, go that far he, there, that. there's no like it's just like it's not it's not stopping because like there's a I, ira glass have you ever heard that guy before I'm you no, can probably pull it name. up he has like a great thing he's like when you're when you're being creative you're trying things and it might not be good and you know it's not good but you're just you're trying to figure it out and you're mm-hmm. trying to make it good but like you have to keep doing that to catch up to where great is like you know you'll if you keep putting yourself out there and and taking chances yes one day something will find out as long as you don't quit even if it fucking takes you till you're 55 right but like if you even have some sort of momentum and you're like this isn't working and you stop like then it's over like i dude i did a podcast for three years it felt like it just it stopped so then i transitioned let me try a, a different podcast like i didn't fail I just was like, okay, it got me into this new podcast, so maybe this will be something. And even if this doesn't work out, then whatever I was doing during that time, I learned something that may, might help me create something that yeah. is gold. Who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. But at least I, I, I keep trying and I, I fucking – until you know something happens, who cares? I'm having fun. Till now, Dude, what's that? Just, uh, just our own journey. We, we've been partnered up for about a year and a half now. Would you say? I don't like the way you put it, but sure. <laughs> and dude, we started this podcast a year, almost a year ago to the date. And we, dude, we had, you know, it's, it's fucking flourishing. It's, it, it keeps yeah. growing. To take a step before it's, that. Uh, I started comedy writing books. I wanted to write yeah. comedic short stories. I did that for five years out of college. Yeah. I would put out a book on amazon.com, self-publish, uh, five buyers, sure. six people buy the book. It got so to the family? point. My family would buy it. My fam- my mom would leave a review on Goodreads. Five stars. And then yeah. the next review would be like, this guy fucking sucks. He's not funny. <laughs> sure. My next move was I tried to go to screenwriting school. I applied because I was like, maybe I'll go be in a writer's room on a sitcom. Sure. Which I think I would hate in retrospect. Sure. Got denied by both USC and UCLA. After that, so I'm five, six years into this point, I saw an ad for a course that taught you how to do comedy on YouTube. I paid a thousand bucks for the course, oh my started God. releasing videos. It's yeah. been three years now, and now I make a pretty solid living just off being a YouTuber. Yeah, I mean, dude. That's a great example thought? of what you're saying. But like, it's, it's just, you, you don't yeah. know where it takes you Never as long know. as you have some sort of passion that you keep like wanting to And, so, and some sort of talent, I would say, too. Dude, and, and That's you the can dangerous learn, you thing. You can learn talent. It's, yeah. There are people, though, who have absolutely no knack for a subject. Leo and I, one of the only open mics I did, yeah. we saw a 50-year-old woman who works for DoorDash who was telling late-night monologue-style jokes into the mic, and she was reading them off a note card. There was absolutely no comprehension for how to write a joke, no delivery, no self-confidence. You're already 50, bitch. Go back to working at Chili's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but here, yes. I mean, it's hard to say, like, talent and passion, it's weird because, like, I'm passionate about sports and then it's like if I would have had the mentality to know like I know what it what training it would take to become a professional athlete would it if I if I had that mentality at 10 mm-hmm. Would I have made it? That's the question. It's hard because it's a physical thing. Yeah. But now, it's, how fast are you though? There are ways you can well, you can get fast. Do a math at. dude. I'm not gonna to lie. To degree, right? It's like, yeah. there, there, there's things like now, like people would say, like okay, like LeBron is obviously a freak of nature, but he obviously he also works harder than everyone. Right. So yeah. so there's that on top of it because then because it's it's like why why is why is one athlete so much better than a, a, a next? Yeah. And ultimately, is it because he's just blessed with skill? It's not mm-hmm. like the, the reason Curry's so good at shoot. Like you don't think Ray Allen shot a, like a thousand shots, but maybe fucking Curry shot ten thousand. Right. I, I I don't I don't think that Curry and Ray Allen like are. I, I wouldn't say one's more talented than the other. It's just one worked harder maybe at something. Mm-hmm. It's it's weird. I, I I don't know how to like. What I can tell you about the guys that made it to the major leagues that I played with, all of them at some point either did steroids 
or started abusing Adderall. That's the excuse that I, I you were about to say sure. abusing women. I was like, that's part <laughs> of the formula. Abusing, uh, no, I'm going sure. to say that, dude, that's that's what I like to, that's what lets me sleep at night because I had every ability and I should have made it. I was blessed with size, strength, more than most dudes. Do you think some guys are just, oh, he's raw talent and he doesn't have to work hard. It's, it's just, he's just so good at it. Uh, there are guys like that in baseball, yes. And they're mostly Latinos. But they fucking also like train hard. They also train hard maybe dude hey. like miguel cabrera probably the best right-handed hitter ever dude he's had three three times he's been in aa he's had multiple duis throughout his life apparently and he's, he's out of shape and he's out of shape he Ooh. swings they they say he comes into spring training having not hit the entire off season just fucking you know it's does weird. 25 swings and he's the best right-handed hitter ever hey. dude see yeah that, it's just weird with sports where it's it like, is weird it's like i've watched comedians like you know dude i was probably I mean, you can think you're funny, and then I you I've watched people get better and get good. Yeah, and so true. And if, so you can learn it, but I but there is something. Mm -hmm. There still is an it factor no, a little you, bit. You're right. right though, man. If I go back and I read my early comedic stories, and if you went back and you watched tape of you bombing on New yeah. Year's Eve for Bobby Lee, we would probably both say if we didn't know that was us, we'd be yeah. like, this kid's got no talent. Sure. Get him off the fucking so stage. Sure. But then it's a good thing we stuck with it, isn't it? Yeah. So there is a way to like learn it but I, it's hard because i don't know like because I, I i i would used to ask people this can anyone be a stand-up comedian and it's just like and then people are like well no not you have to have the guts to get up on stage okay fine mm -hmm. if you have the guts to get up on stage and do 500 open mics a year mm -hmm. now can anyone be it yeah. and it's like mm -hmm. i know guys who've done it 500 times and they didn't progress because there's so many like other things too because it's show business mm -hmm. right it's like uh you gotta work smart too yeah, it's not just like oh he did 500 open mics, but like, you know maybe he didn't have some other skills or he or like he plucked the long nose hairs and he dyed his hair when it started to get gray or he lost 15 pounds. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It's weird because like right now I'm learning to play the keyboard and I've and I've been and I'm doing it every day and I've gotten better in, in just a week. If I showed you how how different it is, yeah. it's crazy. But does that mean if I did this every day for fucking 10 years, I would be one of the best? Like, I don't know. You, you know what? I, is there, I'd say is this. there an it factor with with talent? As Because uh, less with sports, you would say. Yeah. Some guys are just sports. like, okay, they get it. They're freaks, yeah. But if someone is six seven and they work fucking their ass off, can't can they be a great basketball player? I, yes. I think this. I think anybody who puts their mind to learning the craft of joke writing, because joke writing is a very learnable skill. It doesn't matter if you have a bunch of life experience and stories. Joke writing is logic, and it's an art form. It's piecing things together, building tension, arriving at a surprising punchline. If you do that, and it doesn't matter if you're obese you have zero charisma, you have dandruff, you could probably get high enough profile to get a really good paying job on a sitcom. As a, write, as a, as a, writer. As a writer. But uh, would you be a good stand-up comic? Because there could be a comic that knows how to write a joke, but do you know mm. how, to, how, to, how to write a joke for yourself and who you are? That's the difference of like That's, honing into yeah. who, like, like I could fuck it, if I, like if I can, any comic could deliver some other, a joke. Like if it's written on like Jay Leno, like I could fucking, someone wrote a joke for mm. Jay Leno. They're writing for Jay Leno. They know his, his like delivery. You could, I could tell a joke, but like there's a lot of jokes, a great bit from a comedian only he could do. Yeah. Because it's like his humor yeah. and the way he delivers it. Yeah. Like, you know, I, his worldview. Yeah. yeah that, those are the nuances that sometimes I overlook because the, I just don't know stand yeah, that, up as well. That's just them knowing themselves and, and just from going on stage so much. Hey yeah. guys, I, I got to backtrack a little bit because I got a really fucking juicy story about a professional athlete that I just learned this weekend. Oh, we shit. were talking about hard work versus natural talent. There's this athlete, and I've talked to you about him. I'm just going to say his name, Quan Alexander of the fucking 49ers. You know who he is? No. He's the 49ers middle linebacker, I think. He's like a $50 million guy, their star. My girlfriend has a cousin who fucks him, and I guess he's just the most degenerate party animal that exists. Oh, yeah. And it fascinates me that these guys exist in the NFL, and I'm starting to suspect that it's it's not the exception. It's the rule. It's so the these rule, guys party yeah. there. But so I got new fucking... Intel on this guy. Oh Kwan. God, dude! I told Is it the about story. His dick size? Uh, no, well, he's got uh, a, a respectable, but not a huge cock for a black guy. She told me. All right. But I got this fucking story. So, my girlfriend's cousin and one of her my her cousin's friends they go over to Quan Alexander's mansion in San Francisco. I saw a picture of it. I saw its listing on Zillow. It's a ten million dollar mansion, Lamborghini up front. They get over there. Quan Alexander texted my girlfriend's cousin. Here's the best part, though. He's already fucked her once. 
and he hit her up in a mass text. Oh my and god! And then, so after they've been talking, this is like six months after they fucked the first time. He has to ask her like ten lines into the conversation. Hey, babe, what's your Instagram? He didn't even know who the fuck he was talking to. So we had to like go get reacquainted with her face. Like, oh yeah, I fucked her in December. Cool, cool. Yeah, come over. He gets over there. There, a Mexican girl is coming down the staircase all flustered and she has to keep putting sunglasses on and rubbing her eye out. And eventually my girlfriend's cousin's like, hey, what's wrong? The girl goes, oh, Quan just came in my eye. Oh my God. So Quan comes downstairs just shirtless, just wearing all these fucking chains. Jesus. I guess he immediately tries to get my girlfriend's cousin and the other girl into the room for a threesome. Oh just goes God. right from coming in Mexican girl's eyes to like threesome mode. Right Such away. a 25 year old thing to do. Yeah. At 30, at, uh, 36, I come once, I'm like, I'll, I'll see you in a couple days. I'll see you in a couple days. Yeah, I'm you good. You lose your fucking drive, dude. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a fucking middle linebacker drive. That's a middle yeah. linebacker. To fucking come and then be like, yo, let's have a threesome and yeah. I and what what and these chicks are down these chicks are pretty they aren't they aren't fucking saints and this guy's famous and rich but uh, I guess like all night like because they were a little reluctant because he was being so forward about the threesome if he just exercised any subtlety he might Leo I know Start you can massage up. yeah exactly not in Kwan's Maybe arsenal some champagne the, the you know what's funny about the partying is like I mean did you watch the Michael Jordan documentary like, I haven't Rod, seen it yet Rodman was like that yeah he would, Rodman like, was out of his like mind. openly he was just like I need a break I need right. to go to Vegas and went to Vegas for a week to party with Carmen Electra during, during their, their their last fucking Jordan had to go and run. take him out of bed he had to with, get him uh, out like he just was like there's a lot of those like there's a I mean listen alcoholics drug, druggies they're in all aspects of life so there's for sure like some of that in sports you drink I drink here and there not mm. as much as i used to but you smoke I'll, yeah what's how many times have you played carnegie hall once what <laughs> what does the night look like after carnegie because carnegie yeah. the beatles have fucking played there yeah. it's Frank a legendary Sinatra. venue Crazy. oh my yeah it was just that speaking was of drinking night. that seems like a natural segue let's talk about the night after yeah that was a couple years ago but like yeah i had all my good friends like i have a lot of good friends in new york we just like had a good time and partied and let me get some specifics and then we went to was uh, there any trim you had your eye on that night well i mean i've had not <laughs> that night it was just a repeat with someone yeah. i knew already but a check you were fucking who lived in new york city yeah yeah because it was just more that was more of like uh who was she did you meet her in college no i met her through stand-up over the years nice over instagram fellow comedian sure you met her over Instagram. I doubt yeah, she was a fellow yeah, comedian. Yeah, yeah. There are no, 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 she hey, was. Come on, Leo. No. A- after you she play wasn't. Carnegie Hall, you're not fucking some Harry's fellow yeah. comedian shit. Well, after, some hot comedian. After, after you get good, you don't have to fuck uh, other comics. <laughs> nice, dude. So I'm curious about that. So but, you, uh, so Carnegie Hall was more of like we, we had a big dinner afterwards. It was more nice. of like you just lived the ele- – like it was just a nice night. Right. It wasn't like a typical like I'm on the road and like – there's chicks hit me up after a show. Okay, so that tell was us about there one were of those. chicks hit me up after a show, but it was more like let me enjoy this moment with my friends and shit. And then it did was you more of that. did you feel entitled enough to maybe like go for anal, try to get her to lick your ass <laughs> after Carnegie? No, no, it was just more like I was drunk and wanted to come. But you did feel like the fuck. Don't tell me you didn't feel like the fucking man after you walked out of that venue. Nah, because it wasn't my show, man. I was just opening it. Still, it wasn't my show. That's a special night. Me and Danny, we talk about. It was a special night that I got to be a part of. Nice. But and I and I and I recognize that I might never ever get to do that again. Mm-hmm. Sure, I have aspirations to fucking be a theater act one day, but like nothing's guaranteed. But you know that is the easiest market to sell the most tickets eventually, so mm-hmm. it's an attainable goal. But at the end of the day, it was it's a special night that I recognize that I'll I'll remember and appreciate for the rest of my life. But I, you know, it wasn't my night, but mm-hmm. I was still part of it. Like oh, I was part of a cool show. That like before that I did that like if you would have asked me a year before that show and someone's like you know what Carnegie Hall is I'd be like no what do you mean mm. like I didn't know until people talked about it and then I started researching I was like oh this is cool and then being at the venue before hours before and like seeing the history and then being in the green room and seeing the Beatles and Ray Charles and all this other shit you're like wow this is special and then learning like this has been here since before the Civil War right. and that you could perform in there without any microphones it was built so that the whole room could hear you from stage singing or performing That's crazy. so all that cool that 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 shit was cool and uh yeah it's a, it, it's a cool highlight but i always always kind of tell myself like yeah i was a part of a show but that wasn't my show i didn't sell the fucking tickets but mm-hmm. but i also know that that might not happen again because even if you are that big sometimes it just doesn't work out that you perform that venue sure you know what i mean i don't you know i don't know but i mean i i i wasn't like i, no, I never was like 
like how you think because you've done so many big shows at that point. I was never like, all right, bitches, let's go. Mm. Suck this dick. Yeah. I just did that. You know what I mean? Like I just did Carnegie Hall fucking you right. suck my ass and you suck my dick. Dude, that's what like, we're looking you know for. I mean? That's a, so wait. I mean, I have a lot of those stories. I just don't know what I could share on here. <laughs> what do you Dude. mean? Well, there's absolutely no filter on our end. Yeah, it's not, just no what filter. you want to let out into the world. We, we talk that's about, all our, we care our, about. Our, our pussy capitals outside of Los Angeles. I'm with Danny's here in San Francisco. Is that Francisco. a bathroom? Yeah, that one right. No, that the is. second door there. Has yeah. anyone ever left and went to the bathroom Go for during it, man. the podcast? Yeah, Danny does okay. all the time. Drink so much. Empty yeah, your yeah, bladder, yeah. come back, let's hear the pussy and asshole yeah. stories. Why are you taking your headphones off? <laughs> so much. We're still going. It's hot as fuck. Oh, shit. Okay. Austin, how are you hanging in over there? I'm doing great. What are you doing? Yeah, are you masturbating? No, he keeps looking at the screen. I think he's looking up various political right wing shit that he's into oh, at the moment. Guaranteed it's What are you right looking wing? up? I'm just hyper focused. I'm trying to. I like Not you. fuck up. So you're yeah, telling, yeah, me, you're yeah. telling me right now, your beak has been about three inches away from the screen. All you're doing is working on switching the cameras? Yeah, I'm making sure the audio levels are even and nice. other things. I you, like uh, it. This is a change. Like this is a change. Yeah, are you, never this did you take Adderall? No, I didn't. <laughs> do you have Adderall? I'm making him do that for Thursday. No, we'll I did. It. Vivance works for me. I did oh, that yeah, one Vivant. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vivance and works for everybody, buddy. It's a I, fucking horse pill. It's, it's, it's speed, dude. I edited a, a video pill. for like 12 hours straight and knocked it out in one day. Uh, yeah, I, always, I, always, I believe I've told this on the podcast before, but I, I passed the real estate exam because of an Adderall pill. I, I heard that was I had tough. Never, the real estate exam is very difficult. 60% of the people don't pass the first time. And I passed the first time because I'm a genius. Uh, but to, I was thanks to the old Adderall. I, I couldn't, I could not crack 65%. It was, you're supposed to get a 70 on the test, but I was trying to get close to 70 on a practice test. So I had like a book of 12. I couldn't crack 65 and I took the Adderall and I, and I had, I had like a 78 the first test after. It was amazing. It's Congratulations. Pharmaceutical methamphetamine. Do you have a check? Yeah, I got a check, man. I think you met her, dude. Uh, she was at that night. Yeah, she was. At, she was at the show that night, gotcha. where you told that frat joke, and then I, I we connected. Yeah, I was. The... I was wondering if you stop, if you if, if you weren't, I would be like, yo, let me hit her up. But uh... <laughs> you can still hit her. You up. should hit her up, dude. Just no. yeah, DM her, dude. Let's see what happens. That's right? when I was like, all right, this guy. I need to know this guy. He knows some. He's, he knows some hot girls. Yeah, man. That's good. If you had an ugly girlfriend, he wouldn't be on this podcast right now. Well. Part you know. of me, I was like, hmm, what can I get from this? I was like, you know, girls like that. No, yeah, you were dude. with like a few girls. So I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. cool. There was multiple girls there. But yeah, man, I... Uh, was yeah, it a girl who fucked still... nine guys in one night there? No, dude, no. It, that's, a, that's a legend, man. Uh, there, yeah, my girlfriend is one of her friends. She had sex with nine dudes in one night. UCSB, dude. Jesus. Just some fucking you absolute... fucking hurt her. I don't know. Her man, father, somebody. presumably. And, yeah. Apparently, you know. Probably yeah. the last four guys apparently in the train. Apparently, great, great upbringing, wealthy parents. But yeah, she's, she's an early man. I don't she's, know if it was that great of an upbringing. <laughs> yeah, seriously, nine dudes. But I mean, if you had done that, then it would, you know, it would be celebrated. You could say that double. Yeah, that's a double standard. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean, sure. Oh, we're shoving a stick on the show. The whole fine. thing is because it's way easier to fuck if you're a girl. Yeah, way. I mean, absolutely. It's so hard to fuck, fuck nine a, girls. In a night? Dude, dude yeah, in a fucking month. It's yeah, exactly. fucking hard to get new yeah. nine ones. Like, for yeah. you guys, for sure. But, like, yeah, if, yeah. if you're, like, uh, uh, if you like, yeah, I mean, dude, a girl, like, yeah, I mean, everybody knows that. Like, that's why there is a, the double standard. Like, a girl could just be, a, a hot girl could walk in here right now and be like, yo, do you want to all, will you have sex with me tonight? You'd be like, yeah. Everybody well, would say he'd yeah. He'd say no. We'd say yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's only four of us, though. So, it's still a miracle to me how she managed to slip in another five. She, it must we, have been a gang. We're going to get that's her on it. Maybe, yeah. It could have been the water polo team or she something. She also but. was, obviously, she's also just, like, so, like, I just did it for the, she did it for herself. The story, yeah. Apparently, they would, they would. In the in the in the sorority, they would like they would like tally it up, man. Like the girls would tally it. This is a, a weird world we're living in now, dude. Just like like guys. Yeah, like guys. Exactly. What the fuck is that, dude? Do you have a count? Do you keep track of that, Mike? Yeah, he, he's me asked, too. What's, I, I what's have a your, list. I have a word. I'm not gonna tell you my number. Why you can't tell us your body? Come on, man. <clears throat> what, Why not, man? What century it's too is it? Douchey. In? It's not douchey. This well, is too douchey. We'll both sound off on the body count right now. It's too douchey. It's over two fifty. I lost count. I'm at 153. He's sticking to it. But I, I 600 blowjobs for wait, sure. Wait, wait, Leo. What, what century is it in, Michael? Is it in the hundred? It's got to be between one and 200. Or is it higher? Yeah. Nice, dude. Between two and 300. How many of doing them? Doing the road a lot. <laughs> how, many of them were, how many of them were overweight? 
percentage. Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. That's I've, not I've bad. Had, that's a solid I've, count. I've, I've fucked chubby girls. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's great. And, we, sometimes, we, and sometimes it's fun. If you don't fuck chubby girls, they're we don't support you. We of we're we're big proponents of having sex with of the course. overweights. I, I've definitely have yeah. had sex with some. I and I've enjoyed it too. Yeah. Like obviously not like. I've had. I've, there's been ones where I'm like, oh, like I've been doing. It. I'm yeah. like, oh, come on. I'm just like, what? What did I get myself into? Like, why? Right. What's wrong with me? Like, right. why couldn't I have just chilled? But yeah. um, I mean, th- then there's some girls that are like thick, and I like, and I'm like into it, like attracted yeah, to it. Yeah. I'm trying to guess at your statistical spread here. I'm thinking, being a frat guy in college, I know that you can't help but fucking a ton of chicks in a frat. You can be a huge dweeb when you're matched up with sororities. When everybody's dipping in cups in the punch bowl that's just loaded up with Everclear, you're gonna get fucking laid. Yeah, I mean, it was. It, it, I didn't have the confidence I did now, though. I wish I did. It would have been way more. But still, you probably fucked at least 50 girls in your four years of college. No. It Less was, than that. It was like, I think I had fucked only 20 girls graduating college. Wow, so your six, numbers went up. Six, six leaving high school mm-hmm. and then 14 in college. And then it probably didn't get much better when you were out in the professional world hawking vials to CVS. No, it did because in the professional world, people are a little bit uh, more open. It, like when I lived in then at Florida State, Florida State's well, got to be the most State, open place on the planet. Sure. But then I think the older you get, like you're just in downtown Fort Lauderdale, like, you, you grow confidence yeah, as a guy. Yeah, like, Florida in general as a professional, I'm gen- sure it's like, fine. Yeah. It was, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I was only in Fort Lauderdale for from 2018 to 2000. 10 i mean 2008 to 2010 so mm-hmm. in those two years there was probably like another 14 15, there was it would start it started happening more because right. i was also single i had like uh two you girls. had a girlfriend in college for a year Did that slow you down I, I yeah for a year and then like i had another girl i was hooking up with for a little bit but still mm-hmm. but i uh in fort lauderdale i started picking it up a little bit more you get more confidence as you get older too yeah, of you course. know what you're doing and then when I lived in LA, it was just like casually how anyone else would, and then stand up then through touring. How, how is anybody else doing in LA? I never oh, had an LA and, sex spell. He's never. He doesn't really. He didn't experience the the good part of LA. I mean, I guess in LA it was culture. fun, but I also worked like my first job in LA in 2010. I worked at a nightclub, so I was. Yeah, in. Were you a barback bartender? No, I was one of those TSA guys. I would fucking bring out more cups and ice to the bottle service things with the girls. They would run nice. out with the girls, so I'd do that. So I knew all those girls. So girls, you you and I worked at the parlor. I opened. Oh, nice, I opened dude. that part place so you hook up with girls you work with parlor parlor is a good place and then also girls you work with and then you just know every you know the nightlife scene so you know bartenders out so you like get drinks for free and then you just like get lucky over time i've worked and it's strange because you'd think that as a guy who's bringing out cups for the service girls i was a bouncer at bars in san francisco you would think because a lot of the girls going out make great incomes they work at tech companies they're gonna yeah. look down on you for your service role but something about being the sober oh, guy yeah. at the club who's not hitting on them it puts you above the dude with yeah. the button up and the gelled hair who's got the booth bro you got light eyes you, you should be able to do fine if yeah, you're busting yeah, yeah. a table but did you experience that like you'll be fucking walking by a table full of hot chicks and they'll be like trying to talk to you I would, when there's a bunch of rich Persian dudes one booth over I would meet girls at the nightclub and then like try to take them to the bathroom in the back and hook up with them in the bathroom. No, that's a Leo I hooked, up, move. I hooked up with girls in the fucking bathroom at the parlor sometimes. That's very like, irresponsible. Oh, yeah, yeah. As your employer, still, I would have reprimanded you. Yeah, but but as the, dude, the parlor, when that first place opened, everybody was wild there. It was I mean, a wild dude, place. People were hooking up all the time <laughs> in the fucking back with the other employees. Like That was, that was a, a wild place. Yeah, but. that was a wild place. So, Michael, you're doing pretty average in college you start to pick it up a little bit this in is- la i think it was average to the first couple years 2013 14 what is 2015 that? it picks up let's, let's talk about 2015 it picks up dress but let's say this let's agree nice. on a number as men i think an average post-college guy maybe even a little above average is 10 chicks a year that's yeah that's a that's little fair. above average that's one a month if you stay single mm. and or even if you're not like because sometimes you could start hooking up with a chick even if you're not dating her and it's just convenient so you get used to it so but 10 chicks would be normal for uh, any guy who's post-college i think it's a little above single. average i think it's impressive yeah, sure. actually. it depends what city how about that? it would be it would depends be what big city you're in if you fucking live in uh you know fucking 
Salt Lake City, probably yeah. way above average. But if you live in like South Florida, Chicago, New York, if, if you live yeah. in New, New York, York if you live in Manhattan it. and you stay single for one whole year in Manhattan and you know some people and you go out to bars, like you're going to get 10 chicks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. As, it, assuming you're not hunchback. Assuming you're assuming an adjusted you, guy. Uh, yeah. Assuming anyone, assuming you don't like just like get content with hooking up even with a girl for two months. Yeah, that's the right. cardinal you know sin. I mean? like, Can't slow you know down your mean? progress. So, so. <laughs> That's it depends where you where you live too, but like, yeah, I mean, in 2015 it really picked up. I it really picked up when dating apps were invented, and that was 2014. So you weren't blowing up as a comic yet. It was solely a product of the dating apps. Yeah, because in 2000, from 2010 to 2014, I'm still if I did hook up with you, still hook up with like girl comics because that's mm. you, you don't you don't you don't you don't have money. Mm. And then if I if I it wasn't do the road that much, but if you did do the road, you did you could get laid doing the road. But it wasn't like dating apps made it easier. But then, like, yeah, in, in 2015, from on, it, it became it became a game to me. Hmm. It became it became a game, and I was like, how do I get as many as I can in a year? Like that was yeah. like my goal. I was like, oh, I want to. Are how you many? are you single now? Yeah, I'm curious, though, Michael. In 2015, when the dating app thing became a game for you, yeah. did you have any sort of career status to fall back on? In other words, did you have 10,000 no. followers on Instagram? Did you have any big, I mean, did you open for Bobby Lee yet at that point? Yeah, Bobby, yeah, 2013, I started opening for Chris and Bobby here and there, but it wasn't like I was I was hosting for them, like on the road here and there. You still have that confidence of a guy who's going sure, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely helped with confidence, but like, then you learn the dating apps, because I remember when I first went, met a girl off of Tinder, like for a drink, I was so nervous. Mm. And I was already a comic at that point, but I had never, nobody had done this before. This was new. So I was also like, oh, what what, if, what am I getting into? It was still a little weird. A blind date, as a post. Yeah. But then once that got out of the way and I started getting comfortable with it and then I had a script and everything and I was just like, okay, cool. And then, because I still wasn't getting up in Hollywood on Hollywood shows until like 2016. Then I started getting up in the clubs and then it was easy to just tell girls like, "Yo, come to a show." Yeah. I mean, from 2015 it started, but from 2016 that became now, part of your script in your later yeah, years when you were. I don't go. Show. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I'm not that's going nice. on a date anymore. But in 2015, I'm curious about this because Leo, we've talked about it. My roommate and I talk about it a lot. What was in your bio or your profile? What did you say about yourself? I, I just. I, it was nothing. There it was more like I just had the pictures, and I. I what were the pictures like? I, I don't remember what I put, but like right now, like if I, on a dating app, I'll just have like my pictures, like uh, opening for Crystal at Carnegie Hall. No, I have a picture with me. That's not cheating. I'd say do Laugh Factory, no, maybe. I don't do that. I, I just I have a picture of me in like my just one only one stand up thing, and I put uh, I has I say uh, I'm a stand up comedian and I have a dog that or that's what it, it was, and then uh, and then I would just talk to them. I would just be like like literally if we matched, I'd be like Katie exclamation point they're like hey haha and i'm like what's up what are you doing she'll be like blah 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 and i'm like oh so where in la do you live i'm in west hollywood she was like me too i'm like well we should hang out obviously and she'll go we should and i'm like what's your number let me text you i'd always just get off the app get nice. on text that's, that's once smart. you're on text they're fucking feel better and then on text i'd be like yo what are you up to like let's get a drink or well now i'd just be like yo come to a show you're part of the herd when you're on tinder still flirting yeah you gotta get you you're gotta, replaceable you gotta, you gotta get off the the app asap yeah. once you're off the app they feel more comfortable and now in a time like this you just face FaceTime with someone they feel comfortable after a couple FaceTimes you're just like you want to just come over and watch a movie yeah. uh, I've been telling Leo that but he always manages to pull his penis out early yeah, in the FaceTime yeah, yeah. My, yeah. and then it shuts it down it, it gets it, they get uncomfortable once it was the, the mo- what, how many uh, you've been dating for how, mm-hmm. what's the most how many girls do you think you slept with in a year guess I had a uh, when I was at the stunt show um, and I was tw- the first year I was 28 it was like three a week. So, can you do that it, math first, Austin? You got a calculator over there. It was, you, yeah. You, it was like a think, good. You, it felt like a college year for me because in college I went kind of nuts when I went to. You know, I lived in. Um, you know, I, I lived up north at this school called Cal State Stanislaus, and it was seventy eight percent women, and it was like a little hidden gem. They were all like beautiful, like like Persian and uh, and and Portuguese women because there was all these weird farms out there, and I just went off and. Yeah, it, it reminded me of like a college year. Like the the show, we'd have a meet and greet after the show, and I would meet tourists. What is what was this? What was the this? show? It was like a stunt show 
at Univer- at the they park. Were, they at were Universal recreating Studios. the movie Waterworld yeah. and adding stunts into it. So it was right. like a live Waterworld. A World. live show, like a live. And oh, it was, so you had your shirt off yeah, and you were exactly. like meeting uh, people who were at the park. At the that, park who were oh, so in it's town. Like, so it's the same thing as doing stand up for big crowds. Pretty much, yeah. Gotcha. And it was, uh, they were in town. But every day. Ex- but every all, day. And all he did instead of being funny is he flexed his right bicep yeah. and he every fired day. a shotgun. Every day, dude. So. Just women like Australian I mean, dance even, team would come you're in. You're a fetish at that point. It was yeah, exactly. I was a so. Do you think you're over a hundred in one year? I would say yeah, close, man. I don't know if I had broke a hundred, but close. Yeah. It was nice, man. It was nice. Business was good. I got a sugar mom out of it. That's still in my life, uh, and it's you know she helps me survive. It's true. Nice. Yeah. She's helped me mean? survive too. She pays for the channel. She paid for these mean? mics. She paid for these mics. She, she gives me a little allowance. She's listening. Fuck she yeah, might be listening. listening, yeah. But I love her, and you know, uh, I Ms. love her too, Miss Robinson. You, uh, you've changed my life, and I appreciate you very, very much. Well, and what's up, Miss Robinson? What are you doing? He gets she, very territorial. Uh, she, I better be careful over she, there. She likes the, the the kind of the longer hair and the Drogo kind of look. So I'll wear a wig. grow your hair. Yeah, you could maybe I'll wear a wig, wig and do some push ups. The wig could, uh, you know, it could, yeah, yeah, you could pull it off. Wow. But yeah, so it's yeah, it's, it was great, you know, and uh, that was a lot of fun. I like settling down. I became much more of a relationship guy as soon as I hit thirty. You know? I would like to eventually too, but I, yeah. I'm career first right now. And, That's good, uh, man. That's and Leo's exaggerating a little. bit. He didn't settle down that much when he turned thirty. I didn't. I just I had. A few slutty girlfriends, and then I got like a, you know, I'm now with a nice girl, and I like it, and uh, and you know, we'll see where it goes, and we've been, you know, it's two years now, almost, and oh, that's pretty serious. Michael, yeah, it's serious. was your best year something comparable sure. when you're out on the road somewhere Dude, around yeah, there? It's got to be around there. Yeah. What what is it like? Because again, well. I've done stand up a couple of times, and there were some groupy chicks in the crowd, so I can sort of imagine how it Dude, goes. Dude, he's he had two girls come up to him and just say, "Hey, we want to suck your dick," and they're both like nineteen. It was nice, but with yeah. Dalia, when that shit happens, you're imagine a taking the girls up on that offer, and then do you leave the venue? Do you go out partying afterwards? No, I just go back to the hotel. Yeah, you got the hotel room. He gets yeah. you a hotel, and then you're ready. You're set. Yeah. And then are you stacking numbers? So you get numbers from a few girls, and then you stagger it. Like, I'm going to go straight back to the hotel with this girl, and then kick her out, bring the next one over. There's a girl in every city at this point now <laughs> nice. that I talk to. Nice. And then do you not, do you go for the random club pussy, and then have her come over later on, or is it just go that go-to no, no, I don't girl? go out at all. Nice. Just do the show, eat, and then just hang out but at this point if i go to any big city i know a girl so there's right. always i could there could be a girl i've talked to before over the last five years but sure there's always a new one that i like if a girl's like hey come out with us i'm like no because mm-hmm. there's someone else who would just be like, i'll hang out with you and come straight to the hotel room. and do you have so that that's you know how are your relationships with these girls because which ones the girls who were just like, a random person like the chick in fucking cincinnati for example who you can hit up and who will come over and fuck you at midnight yeah maybe i mean but sometimes you go back to these cities and then they're in real relationships it's yeah. like yeah like, their lives go on but right. like some you know it, you you know and you're like hey and you've seen a couple times over the years all right here's the story i'll tell you this one because i this one i don't feel bad telling uh like it like well, yeah let's wrap up on this i'm excited oh, for it. phoenix is the best all, all right. right like because you got scottsdale when you do tempe that's a, that's a an, an insane city. amount of hot chicks out i don't know yeah. no, people don't know that but it is a hotbed of hot chicks yeah. for some reason there would be there would be these the all right this girl would come to the shows all the time every year and she would come with her mom and her mom is like 38 and she was like 22 like her mom had her at like 15 so they're best friends uh, and she has kids too uh, her, her do- so she's a grandmother uh, at like 40 how, but her how old's the daughter like the hot daughter the hot daughter's like let's say she's 24 with kids uh, okay. she's 24 with kids yeah. and then the mom's like 40 uh-huh. like she had her with 16 but the mom's fucking hot with fake tits so fucking hot, uh, right? Uh, so they would come to the shows every year. I see where this is going. Oh, mom, so daughter, and the kids. So, yeah. All in your hotel room. Oh, well, no, the God. kids are young. But the mom, the mom, one year, the mom, like we we're hanging out, and the mom's just like, you know, she's single at the time, and she's a fucking divorced mom, uh, grandmother at this point, but she was hot, and uh, <laughs> we hooked up. She till this day, like her fucking blowjob was amazing. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> All time great. Yeah, it was like I remember we, we we fucked, we hooked up, and it was great, and it was so awesome. And they were cool. They were a fun hang. They were like cool people, but like you could tell their energy was groupy. Like they probably do this at other clubs or like venues with rock bands or whatever. Mm. But her mom was like fucking. <laughs> with other comic Ralphie May, they yeah, both yeah, sucked yeah. him off. Maybe 
Maybe. <laughs> and, he's and, big. But I don't know if they would do with him. It may, but either way, she... Uh, hey, he's a theater she act. Was, she, was, she was fucking... She was hot. We hooked up. The next year, I go back, and uh, I start talking to her daughter. Oh, and we, shit, dude. <laughs> and her daughter knows I fucked her mom. Oh, and we, we, Is the mom there at that show when you're talking to the daughter? They were there, but like now I'm talking to the daughter like on Instagram or something, and then she comes over, and we fuck. And she knew oh, I fucked her mom. God, and at that dude. point, I was just like laughing because of the story, but yeah. I was also like, you're really into that's it. fucked. <laughs> that's fucked that, her, that she knew her mom yeah, yeah, fucked yeah, me, fucked but was like, I don't care. Yeah. And then uh, the next year, I went back, and then I fucked the mom again. Oh, <laughs> and, my God, and then dude. the mom knew that I fucked the daughter. Oh. So now I'm just like, wow, this family's fucked. Fucked. So that's fucked. A three year development. Yeah, three I'm year telling you, mom dude, knew. Wow, dude. You got to tag the ear of the eldest kid daughter. Wait till she turns 18 or 16 if it's Nevada. I'm not even going to touch Fuck this. her three generations. Fuck her three generations. <laughs> that's legendary. Well, we'll see in 20 years. No. Yeah. Hey, uh, Michael, we're about to sign off. We should probably ask this. Anything juicy? Dalia? Any stories? You guys yeah. partying together? That's he doesn't little, party. That's a little yeah. out of line. He doesn't drink. I mean, we. Anymore. I know he fucks chicks. He's too good looking. He doesn't. He just. He's he a, fucks he's a chicks. Mature man. He's just a mature man. Just make it after. He's a the, mature man, and he's he, you know he's forty. He doesn't party. He right. just he likes to eat and he he works hard. But we laugh. He's the funniest guy I know. Like just like hanging out with him. Yeah. He's just a funny guy. So he like he's he's bigger than just hanging out and like laughing a lot. And we fucking and. It's great because like he'll, we'll just get room service and like have the best food and shit. He's Michael's got to do a little PR right now, but Leo nice and I both know we've heard stories about Delia Dude, slaying wait, some. Should we tell him the story? Top shelf that? plus. Yeah, let's tell the story. Maybe right, maybe, maybe years ago. So this fucking chick, dude. I yeah, a couple years, years ago. ago, a couple years, yeah, three three, three years ago. We're, it, All right, yeah. It's, it's because he has like a kid now and a girlfriend. Yeah, exactly, That's why exactly. we're doing so three PR years control. ago. Four years ago, maybe. This girl, uh, you know, hits me up and she, you know, she says I that I had hooked up with. It says, you know, I, uh, I, I hooked up with Dalia, you know, your, your hero or whatever. And I was like, yeah, he's a good comedian. That's awesome. I was involved in this story too. Right. Remember? Flat, f- fast forward to th- three, like a year, like not even six months ago. I tell, I tell, uh, you know, uh, Danny that, that I know a girl that hooked up with Dalia. Right. And then Danny, for some reason, she wants to know his cock size. Right. That's so. not how it goes. Here's how it goes. <laughs> Leo is a beautiful man. Very vain though. The, I am. the idea, I am. if there was another guy roaming around, the, the idea of Jason Momoa kills him. Because Jason Momoa is like an upgraded Leo Dottavio. He's such a fucking asshole. And I'm not sure, sh- dude. And I mean, so, you got to deal with that for a long time now. Yeah, I have. Yeah. He secretly loves it. Getting called know. Aquaman on the street it's, gets his cock weird. rock it's like hard. You could maybe work with him, as yeah, a, a stunk but guy, he yeah. probably does his own shit anyway. He does a lot of his shit, and, and he films almost always in uh, Australia, overseas, and he has like the big, the two biggest freak stunt guys and they just put a wig on them they're both like six four and just ex parkour dudes and you know they don't need they don't need me dude leo's obsession with aquaman the one right behind that is chris d'elia and so (laughs) i gotta not true they okay they don't not true you guys don't look alike but you're both really into fashion and looking good he's into health and fitness so leo has a man boner for him because of that but the last thing is i think he's funny i've heard murmurs around the city of hollywood that chris d'elia has got a rather large penis Delia, or excuse me, Leo prides himself on the exact same thing. He yeah. thinks he's got a big cock. Well, how sure. big's your how big's your dick? Not very big. I've seen a picture of it hard. How big is it? Over seven? <laughs> I'm fucking, th- I'm <laughs> fucking over with him seven? Right now. seven. It's seven. It's a solid cock. It's it's seven, wait, wait, seven inches of solid cock. It's proportional. Michael, I don't say, I don't pride myself on having a huge cock. My, it's proportional to my body. There's I, huger I, than seven. I, seven's yeah, a great size. It's a good cock. I have a yeah, regular cock. Yeah, yeah. Me I have too. a regular size. I have a regular cock. Regular cock. <laughs> but let me yeah, let I'm me finish. Proportional. We got to finish this story. I don't want Michael to spit out any teasers here. So I tell Leo, I was like, hey man. You got to figure out right now, once and for all, to figure out where you and Dalia rank in the universal (laughs) hierarchy, you got to figure out whose penis is bigger. Because you guys both hooked up with the same girl. It's the perfect opportunity. Text her right now. We were driving to San Francisco to film a video. I fucking texted her, dude, and it wasn't good because she... Not even five minutes later. Yeah, she goes, uh, did she, I believe she said... Uh, she she checked to make sure you wanted the information yeah, for like, real. Yeah, sure you want them again. She goes, she goes, it's the biggest I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh, great, dude. It doesn't you know? mean anything, though. I'll tell you that right <laughs> You're now. Right, I know for a fact it doesn't. So, Never But can come. you tell... I want to hear your evidence for that statement. I want to know why you think that. We're not going there. <laughs> oh, shit. So you're saying that you and Crystal Lee double-teamed a girl and a double-tree in, <laughs> and that you left her just as satisfied, if not more so, than Dalia. 
Don't get distracted by a cameraman, Austin. A double the tree, dude. It was it was probably a nicer than a double tree. You found out you yeah. found out where you stand. And yeah, then that, it's that. fine. But, dude, but it's Michael, fine. that's something the audience knows. I'm always throwing around my insecurity about my penis size. It's very average. I've had yes, experiences yeah. with girlfriends having boyfriends with way bigger penises yeah, than me. A book about, but yeah. if if you have some story right now that'll prove that size doesn't matter, I would love to hear it. Austin would love to hear it. The I audience would love to hear. I know it. that, like I, I've, I have another. I have a, multiple friends. I have really huge dicks, and I, I have been Eskimo brothers with them, and I know it just doesn't matter. It, doesn't it just matter. doesn't matter. I know totally. If, if anything. When it's that big, sometimes it it's not as good. But like then there are some women who like love a really big dick, but that yeah. doesn't mean that it's they're not having fun hooking up with you. Yeah. Like that that's not an insecurity for me at all. Like it's just mm-hmm. like it, that's what's dope to think like it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, yeah. Now there are some women that prefer it. That yeah. is a fact. Mm-hmm. But then there are people who don't prefer it, who don't like it. Like it's too much. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's just like it, it. But it doesn't matter. There's I I've hooked up with girls who hooked up with that and it's just like not even brought up they're just having a good time i agree with you i totally agree i think that was so well true. put yeah blink once if crystal lee has got a big penis well we he blinked know. once i don't know if the we camera is on. no dude but have you yeah. seen it have you actually seen it on tour i know you have <laughs> tell us a little we bit. have a we have there's Listen, a man, when you make as much money as i did opening for him you would keep your mouth shut on this podcast too fucking yeah, so fucking I, fucking like agree, I like it i like it i like it See, the thing is that we the, we have, a, like, a, it's, I guess, to, to really be in the brotherhood of the Leo and Danny show, like, every, you, you have to show your cock. And uh, I'm not going to ask you to do that. But that's, that's the fascination of it. Yeah. That's why we talk about Cox. It's just, it's stupid. You know, it's a frat no, cash. I, I totally respect I, it. No, I, I totally, I understand it, dude. Yeah. I, uh, I resent that if you're... I was, if, uh, if, I, if this is fucking 2030 and I'm yeah. a famous touring headlining comedian, mm-hmm. you can ask me whatever the fuck I wanted. Yeah. Nice, and I had dude. a fucking, you know, million yeah. dollar mansion in the hills. Go ahead. You yeah. Ask fuck away. Out. Yeah, yeah. I'm you're just, on the climb. I dude. still have a fucking career. Yeah, I'm just saying, dude, career, dude. after all we've done for you this afternoon, I resent that yeah. you're still more loyal to Chris than us. But <laughs> Michael, that's another thing. Uh, you mentioned that you've made X amount of money opening for him, and therefore you're not going to fucking spill secrets on his dick size. How much do you get paid for a show like Carnegie Hall as the opener? It's uh, it just varies because that was a run. You know, there was other yeah. shows. It just depends. Like I would sell a lot of merch too, so it just nice. depends. Like your own merch. Yeah. So we would like, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. Just certain runs, I could make three grand, five grand. A night. Nice. Just from a run. Like whether we did three shows, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's like a weekend. You know, a whole whole weekend. weekend. Yeah, it just depends how big the venues are, how much merch we sell. But if I didn't sell merch, whatever he felt like it, I don't know. It goes more to like, there's so many other things that, you know, you know, he's paid for. That just not from doing shows. So You're talking about meals, hotel rooms. All the time. Yeah, just other things. Just like a thousand dollar gift here. You know what I mean? Nice, like it's nice. just more of like I'm his employee. Like he's helped me out during uh, this hard time. Like I'm not making money. What's your base pay though? When you step on stage to open for him in an average size theater? It just depends. Like it, it's, it, there's no base pay. It could be a thousand bucks. It could be 500 bucks. Which is you still know? good money. So it could be, as a comedian. It, it could, and is that a run or is that one show a thousand or yeah, 500? Yeah, it just Like I'm saying, if there's a run, like, like, you know, if there's, you know, let's say we're doing, let's say he's just doing Irvine improv and we're doing six shows, then maybe I'll get like 1500 only. But you know, if it's a big venue and it's just one show or like if we're going to go do a college, it's one night Connecticut and then come back, maybe it'll be two grand, you know, who knows? Like it's just, yeah. there's no set, there's no agreed set thing except when like sometimes we'll be like, you know, selling merch and stuff. He lets me sell merch, which is mm, like, that's cool, which man. when, if someone's letting you sell merch, it takes away from their merch sales mm-hmm. and my merch would kill it. So like there'd be weekends like where I'd make like three grand just off my merch. So he'll only give me a thousand. But if I didn't have the merch, you know, I don't know what he would give me. So you're knocking you know on I mean? the door of a hundred thousand or you're right about a hundred thousand a year. In 2018, I made a lot. I didn't make as much in 2019 because we didn't do as much on the road. Mm-hmm. But in 2018, I, I hit like 140. Wow, man. Good money. That's, that's but awesome. not in 2019. And then this year, I've probably made 10 grand. And you've been in comedy <laughs> for how long? Ten, Almost 10 years. 10 years in September. That's great. Man. That's yeah. a huge success story a huge for a comedian. Success. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but that was more like, there's more to it. Like the way I built a, like a merch store and like just 
yeah, I mean, not a lot of people are making that. Like you, Nobody like I, I started selling merch and and building his store and making his store profitable for him too. Like like most people would just sell merch at a table, but like I I built a, a like on Square, I built a store and like a sign, and then like would organize his merch to where I was just running his merch for him, mm-hmm. like and reordering more shirts, and like he had nothing to do with it. Wow. And then I was just selling, so that was like my side job instead of working at a bar. That's great. So man. I made that like very profitable for me. But I mean, yeah, no, yeah, it takes. Nobody makes that much normally, but like, no. I made myself a little bit more valuable than just doing stand up. Like, mm. it was a lot of work. It was stressful too. Like, I would be because like, it got to a point where like I'm going on the road. And people are know know who I am. Right. So now I have to like meet people. They're like, hey, what's up? Oh, big fan. We want to take a picture. But I'm also like, hey, nice, thanks. Okay. And then I have a, 200 people trying to buy merch, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, I, I can't small talk with you. And then yeah. like they're like, you're you're an asshole. I'm like, mm-hmm. now I'm just fucking overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm so overwhelmed. So, and then over the last year, like we had a buddy help come on the road and help sell for us. But yeah, I don't want to sell anymore. But there was a time when it was it was a lot of work, like hauling luggage and yeah. shipping, and then just dealing with customers, but also yeah. fans, yeah. and then just trying to be a nice person too. Yeah. But like that was a hard balance because I was like, I'm not a bad guy, but you're trying to like small talk and like be annoying when there's 200 people trying to fucking buy shirts and mm-hmm. the slower I go the more people walk out and this mm-hmm. is my livelihood now right, right, and this right. is how I fucking pay my bills that's like, tough man yeah. so there was that so. and unless you're a hot chick with your mom waiting at the bar yeah. get out of my yeah. sight yeah. yeah and yeah what he said <laughs> but also just fucking hit me up just slide in Slide in and I'll see. You. Wait, are you using our podcast right now to target pussy? <laughs> Unacceptable. Dude, hey, there, there'll be Slide some, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be some like hotties, dude. Just... We'll just tell them, dude. Hey, uh, you know, Izzy and Cammy, right? Are those the, yeah? Slide into his DMs, dude, and say what's up and tree and, and if you're really if together, you're really they nice, weigh three hundred pounds. Yeah, lovely. Well, that's no, not no, that much. Together they they weigh four hundred. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> together they weigh fucking uh, uh, probably a hundred and seven pounds, uh, two hundred and seven pounds, maybe. A little over 100 years. They're hot listen, chicks. They're we're, hot chicks. We're falling apart. It's late. Listen, yeah. listen slot in his DMs. You, 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 real nice. Well, me and Danny will put you in a video. Are we going to do that? I don't know. I, I don't promise know. that. But if they want to have sex with Michael, they can very well go ahead. Michael, do you got anything you want to plug? Just your YouTube channel, your Instagram? Just, yeah, I guess just my podcast. If you like me, then check out The Takeover on all platforms. Nice. The Takeover with Michael and Ochi and on uh, YouTube, just Michael and Ochi. Yeah. We'll have it all linked in the bio, yeah, yeah. as well as my Patreon, Leo's Patreon. Yep. Austin Schlosser's gay only fans. <laughs> nice. They give you love, though. That's cool. They give him love. Look at this yeah, kid. He's him, big in the gay community. Love. Thanks for watching, yeah, people. Thanks, thanks for, uh, for coming, man. I can't wait till we cut these mics and we can get the dirt on Delia's penis size. Oh, here we go, dude.